There you go. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. This is Courage and Chaos. This is Dungeons and Dragons for absolute beginners. Uh, and this video series is all about teaching people D&D for the very first time. So um, everybody here is relatively beginner. We're now several sessions in, but still learning. Please ask questions. Please do that for each other's sake. But also for people on the video, we'll learn by you asking questions. We never want to leave anyone behind. Um, this is a, just a generic campaign with some homebrew thrown in, designed to teach people, uh, and you're learning new stuff all the time. We're now cranking up to um, much closer to actual full-on, just regular game shop D&D. You know, the combat's going to be very much like what, you're, what you'd get into in a typical D&D session. Uh, and you're up to level 3 or level 2 or on the verge of 3, so it's really getting real now. Uh, these materials that I'm using here are available online. If you're on Patreon, you can get these materials yourself, and you can teach your own friends and office mates how to play D&D. And I do encourage you to. Uh, you fully graduate from my program when you teach people, you know, and do a little bit of DMing yourself, and you can use my scripts and all that stuff to do. So it's great to have you. I've got a quick announcement. For the next session, you, I want you to have a second secondary PC at your normal level, so level three, and probably saying level three for you, yeah. have another player character PC ready to go. There's a twist coming up where all that I'll say is you'll, you, you can still stay attached to these characters, don't worry about losing these characters, but we will divert to a party, uh, an alternate party uh, that you'll be able to inhabit. Just make characters, that you, you don't necessarily have to feel like you're gonna live with this character forever. It might be a short term thing. So characters they just wanna give a try to. You're gonna be doing combat and skills just like anything else, but there's a chance to try out a different character, and then you'll have that backup character in case something terrible so that's happens. A meanwhile, in this exactly. section Exactly, it it's gonna be a bit of a meanwhile sort of story, and that's gonna be a lot of fun. So do bring that secondary character. Yes. Uh, yeah, softens the blow if you lose one, but also gets ready for that twist. Now, I do encourage you to always keep changing characters. However, starting pretty soon, I'm going to say you can't bring yet other new characters in until you finish off the shrine. You're going to be deep in the shrine. The tension is going to go up, and changing to an entirely new character might throw the group off a little bit too much. So right. usually, you're, though you're welcome to do it, maybe in, uh, in a session or two, I'll, I'll stop you from uh, coming up with entirely new characters. Unless you can, unless your one gets killed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unless one gets killed. Then you have this backup character to yes. go right to. Okay. So... Uh, we're going to uh, jump forward a little bit here to, uh, we'll do a trick called In Medias Res. Uh, you are all standing in the Shriner Cave. You're in that terrace that you're looking at. You're standing here and you are, uh, you've looked up into this uh, from the tree platform at the distance. Now you're all here. There are many armed men around you, but none of them look particularly intimidating because they're all idiots. Uh, they're pretty badly dressed, they have very crude weapons, they, they, they seem to be a lot of bluster, but they don't seem to be really super capable fighters. They're also covered with like, scars and bite marks, and they look kind of emaciated. <clears throat> but there's a lot of them. These men are listening to you as you are trying to talk your way past them, sitting here on the edge of the Shriner Cave. You're trying to convince them to let you pass deeper in to the Shrine of Evil Chaos. So, let's just kind of see how did we get here. Let's do a quick flashback about how you got here. So, you came back from Nyladel, you got to that tree, you figured you're going to scope out the shrine, you want to spy in a little bit more, and you want to have a place to, you know, to rest a little bit. You had your long rest in Nyladel, it's the morning, you came on through, you got up that platform again, and you used that, uh, that, that spyglass to take a look at the terrace for a while. It's a shallow cave, I'm calling it terrace because it's like a very shallow cave that has almost no roof, it has a bit of an overhang. So you see that this place leads deeper into the Shrine of Evil Chaos. Uh, this is Ziggy's Shrine of Evil Chaos, the goblin told you about. And let's call it the SOEC for short. His denizens, let's call the Shriners, who we've been calling them that so far. You can call them the assholes as well. That's also perfectly acceptable. Now that sweep, last time you were in this tree, there was a sweep. They were trying to find you and roust you out, and you were hiding from them in this tree. That sweep is done. The Shriners are no longer marching all around. The goblins are no longer marching all around. No more goblins are leaving to the north to go on those goblin raids. Every once in a while, you might have seen a band come from the north, you know, because they're latecomers and taking equipment, but it seems like they're in a hurry to get there. So the canyon is quite quiet, um, and uh, you can watch in peace for a few hours from this tree platform to really scope the joint. So that's what you did. And you saw a couple things. Maybe you marched around a little bit and snuck around. There's no other way to get deeper into this Shriner cave than what you're looking at right now. There's this terrace, and there's, uh, it's full of people. There's a couple exits that go deeper in, which I'll talk about in a second. But it's full of people, uh, these idiots, uh, for one. The bushes are all cleared out, it's broad daylight, you know, you can tell there's torches and things that are blazing all night and all that, so you won't be able to get in, sneak in. 
while you're there, you saw some people coming and going from the cave uh, over those hours. Some of them, how, uh, some of them were Shriners, obviously, because you can tell they're going in and out of the two exits that, that, I, that I've described before. I'll describe again. But you see people come up, and they just have the air of someone who's coming there for the first time. They look like adventurers. But they look like the kind of adventurers before you became all heroic. They're like level zero or barely level one adventurers. They've got their packs, they've got their backpacks, they've got regular weapons and things. But they look very discouraged and bedraggled and sort of cut up and all that. And they're sort of shuffling up there. And when they come up, they, uh, they, they look around like it's the first time. They talk to the idiots here in this cave. They seem to have some sort of long conversation. And you see through the spyglass, they're being given food. They're pointed at a bed like a dirty cot somewhere in this terrace. This terrace is like a huge, like a backpacker hostel. It's just full of cots and cubby holes and piles of trash and stuff like that. So they're shown a cot and they're given a job. They're given a hunk of rock. You, you add a distance, it just looks like a fist sized hunk of rock and some metal instruments. And they just kind of sit down and they look at what other people are doing and they just start concentrating on the rock in front of them with the metal instruments. But from this distance, you can't tell what they're doing. <coughs> so they're doing a job. And they, there they stay. Now, heroes that you are, you decided, look, you're just going to rock on up and talk to these idiots, right? You, if you figured that, you're, that your best way is just to find out what's up. Because you could at least pretend to be adventurers. You're adventurers. Maybe you're interested in a job. That's your idea. So are the adventurers mm -hmm. becoming idiots? Well, they, maybe they already were idiots. In any case, they, they, they look like they're sitting down doing a very boring job. And, okay. they're just kinda, and they're just kind of melding with everybody else. Maybe their clothes are a little bit cleaner than the other idiots, but you think a few days will fix that. So, okay. Yeah. okay. They, they don't seem to suddenly lose their minds or anything. It just seems like they're, they're just not very ambitious people, apparently. So, as, so you decided to get closer, right? So as you got closer, you saw clearly that... Nearly all these idiots, they're using these metal tools to pick away hunks of rock. The largest hunks are sort of like the shape of this tankard without the handle. You know, about that sort of size and shape, like a rough cylinder of just rough rock. Some of the hunks are much smaller because they've always been picked away at, like little bits have been cracked away from them. They're sort of smaller in their hands. All of them, when they're picking away at the hunks, they're all a bit nervous. The smaller the hunk of rock is, the more nervous they look. Like, like they take their instrument and they... They like wedge, they like drill a little hole and they put in like a metal stick and like, like sort of pry at it and they, they sort of wince as, as a piece of rock pops off. They wince and they look and they look sort of eager, you know, because they, they get sort of excited and they look and they look sort of disappointed. And they groove themselves and they pick up their instrument and then do another thing, a little chisel or a little, you know, things like that. So every time they do it, they're just getting tense and release. Um, so they look disappointed and try again. This is their job. You try to get deeper in the terrace because you can. You, you're heading for those exits uh, that, that you see, but you get stopped by this bunch of idiots that's standing in front of you now. A bunch of idiots. They put down their rocks. They jumped up and uh, they form a kind of phalanx, you know, blocking your way. These are all. Uh, they all come from one half of the cave. The, the southern edge, one end of the, this terrace, is all full of he's. They are all wearing black with accents of red, sort of different shades of red, and the black looks kind of like hand dyed. It's all kind of ratty armor, and they have basic weapons, and sometimes the weapons have like red ribbons around them, or dyed red, or dyed black. Not very good. They're sort of like reddish black, that like when old black clothes do fade, sometimes they come up that red. Yeah, it seems, it seems hand dyed as yeah, red yeah, or yeah. black. Yeah. They are all sitting in the half of the terrace, sort of on one half of the terrace. They're near an iron door, the iron door I'm going to describe, and that you've seen before. But they're all wearing these very ratty clothes. Um, and a lot of them have what you can only call jailhouse quality tattoos on their skin and their neck and their faces and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> done with needles and just kind of blurry. And the tattoos are all kind of vaguely glyph-like. They all look like kind of like weird hooky glyphs and symbols and things. Um, nothing you recognize. So let's just call them the Red Idiots because you can tell right away they seem to be at least trying to look like they're members of the Red Clan or members of the Abandful Clan. They kind of have that, that air about them. And they're all bros. Bros? Bros, you know, brothers, you know, guys, yeah, okay, dudes, right. super studly dudes. Dude, they're all men folk. folk. Yeah, they're so, dude. Yeah, it's they're, why. They're, they're they're kind of muscular. You know, a lot of them are kind of like you're yeah, showing off their bit of chest and all that stuff. You know, okay. chest, bare chest. chest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As you look around, you recognize one of these idiots. You recognize one of them. It's Emerald. Everyone from the Elf Village, yeah, oh, yeah, he's there. He's got some black clothes on, he's got some red stuff. He's, he's obviously just gotten there because you just saw him last, yesterday in the village. He's the one that helped you. He held the log that you went across and he sort of agreed to do and all that stuff. Emerald's amongst the idiots there. And, and he, as, as you look at him, he, he just kind of gives you a very sort of smug sort of smile, sort of like a, like, hey, kind of smile to you. Like, he looks very satisfied with himself. Like, he knows that you're surprised to see him. 
What, so it was okay for goblins to come after uh, <laughs> the village? Are you kidding on us? <laughs> <laughs> so, that phalanx of red idiots, including Emerald, uh, they, they all challenged you to state your business here. Uh, you know, they didn't want you to get any closer to the exits. And at first, you maybe, I, I would say you pretended to be, you know, like, hey, well, we're interested in this job that you got. You know, maybe we're ready to stop the adventuring life for a while and, you know, do that. So you figure out what the job is. You must pick away at these little rocks in hopes of finding a chaos shard inside that hunk of rock. So somewhere inside there is a chaos shard. Once you find a chaos shard, some higher-ups get called in from those exits back there who inspect it somehow to see if it's a suitable chaos shard, which seems to be a pretty rare event. If it's a suitable chaos shard, you get promoted. You get to go back mm -hmm. through those exits, and you, you, get, you, you go up a rank for finding it. So they're all picking away at it in hopes of getting lucky and finding a chaos shard. What it makes it a suitable chaos you shard? You don't know. They don't even know, really know either. They know that it's suitable or not. So you're, you've learned more. You're getting a good look at this. You're figuring out what to do. And so here we are. So now we've caught up to the present moment. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a little bit about this terrace. So as you look around, you've gotten a good look at what everything is in place. Da, da, da. Caves of Chaos, Shrine of Evil Chaos, the Terrace. This is in the wiki. These are all some materials that you Ooh. can get yourself if you, uh, can if you ask, get my material. Can I ask a quick question there? Do we, uh, can we see the shards that they're getting at, and have we seen one that has been considered suitable? No, not yet. Okay. You do not. Because this is all us they're observing, all, all observing of rock. from the From a distance, and then, then now you walk, and then you're, you're right next to them, but they're all uh, hunks of rock, and they seem to be expecting a chaos shard to be inside. But um, once they get one, it's like finding Willy Wonka's golden ticket. Like, they're very happy if they get one. You know that one hasn't been found. Otherwise, they, they'd be calling in the higher officers to okay. inspect it somehow. So you're kind of hoping that doesn't happen. You so don't have to meet the officers right yeah. now. They're, they're, they're looking for a suitable chaos the shard, but the fact is that, that not that all the chaos shards are suitable because it's exactly. a really, really rare yeah. event to find right. a suitable exactly. chaos shard. Yes, yeah. You're not, sure, you're not even <laughs> sure if every <laughs> hunk of rock has a chaos shard. They, they seem to expect a chaos shard to be somewhere in the hunk of rock. But even if you find one, you, you have to be very lucky for it to be suitable. So, looking around the terrace, you see a few notable things. Like I said, it's squalid, dorm-like conditions. Prominent on uh, a shield above as you enter, and you can see much more clearly now here, is a big stylized shield with SOEC written on it in sort of you know, jagged lightning bolt type letters, and, the, and the, the hand, you know, the hand form on that big <laughs> thing. There's torches next to it, there's skulls, there's black candles on the skulls dripping really cool black wax all around it. You've got kind of like disemboweled sort of skins and stuff, like some actual dead things are sort of up there. It looks kind of nasty when you get close to it. It's all like oh, a rave and a Metal vibes, actually. Yeah, yeah real metal vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Trying too hard. <laughs> trying with that metal vibe uh, even harder is the half that all the he's come from, all the red idiots came from, are various pictures, portraits of Ziggy. Again, you saw Ziggy from a distance. They all match Ziggy. So you can see Ziggy. And in all of them, Ziggy is on stage, right? And he is looking super metal. He's got a big, like, leather, chrome, spiky stuff. He's got mohawk or spiky hair. He's got his huge axe guitar. He's sweating and just, like, really cranking away at it. So he looks yeah. really pretty badass on the stage, right? And me That's on that half of the terrace. Throwing equipment. <laughs> However, the other half, you haven't really noticed because, you know, all these guys came up and blocked you, but you can see the other half of the terrace, have got a very different sort of people. Let's call them the silver idiots. They're equally idiotic, but they are completely different. They're all a mix of he's and she's. Every possible race and color is in there. They're all picking away at rocks as well. At least they're picking away at rocks while they're watching something on a little stage they've built. I'll get to that stage in a minute. But their, their job is obviously the same thing, pick away at rocks. They're in the half of the terrace where there's not an iron door near them, there's a silver keyhole near them. The silver keyhole is mostly covered up by the stage. Like before you saw the whole silver keyhole, now since you've been gone, it seems like a stage has been pushed up against it and sort of covering up the silver keyhole. And there's someone on stage, uh, which I'll describe in a minute. But these silver idiots, they have very exotic costume-like clothes. They're, none of them are very good taste or good shape, but they seem to be people who are trying to use like tissue paper to imitate, you know, cardboard and bad fabric to imitate much more high fashion stuff. But it's very operatic, stage clothes, all these weird themes or just wild themes from all over the world, things that you don't recognize, strange hats, strange uh, makeup, all kinds of colored hair, uh, all kinds of different shapes and things. They're all there. Nearly all of them have a burned box over their eyes. So that burned rectangle. But the rectangle is often very messy. It's like it's like it doesn't have real defined edges and, and there's a lot of like weird extra burn scars around it. Also, some of the scars look very old, like it looks like their eyes got burned a long time ago, but not recently, so they don't it doesn't look very fresh. So 
not like they've used a visor that has been const specially constructed. Maybe so, yeah, exactly. So you think that visor that you saw before is a very sharp outline, like 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 Chop Chops was very precise. Was like, I'm thinking Jordy LaForge. Perfectly, yeah, yeah, exactly. And even BB was sharp. This looks like if they were using visors, every time they used it was a different size, it wasn't on very straight, and just it was kind of a leaky. Or pre-visor and just like a bandana yes, exactly. or something. <laughs> right, exactly. Have, you have, can we only seen, guess. have we seen any of them in one of their visors uh, at the moment? Uh, no, the, yeah, well, across one or two of them you do mm -hmm. see hanging out, you know, look, what's hanging around their neck is what well, looks like a visor basically made out of tin foil. Like it's sort of like making a bong out of a Coke can. This is the equivalent, you know, like just, like something that wasn't designed to be a visor is just made in this really crumpled looking ugly thing hanging around their neck. Yeah. And it's got like burn marks all around it. So uh, you see the silver idiots on that half of the room. Now they've got portraits of Ziggy as well, but their portraits of Ziggy are you know, much more artistic, right? I mean, none of them are photographs, obviously. But they seem to be more speculative, but they're on different kinds of stages. But here Ziggy is wearing clothes sort of like him. They're all, he, Ziggy's all wearing these different, just fantastic clothes, very androgynous clothes. His hair is doing all these amazing different things with different makeup. You know, some he looks very feminine, and some he looks very soulful and thoughtful. He's and some he's David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought the first time you mentioned yeah. it a couple of weeks ago. Can't go he, after Bowie. He looks quite a bit like David Bowie. Uh, and this, and they, these are portraits that they have on his, on their half of the stage. I mean, we all said that at the same the time. What's his name? Ziggy. <laughs> and isn't one of um, David Bowie's characters? Wasn't he Ziggy's Ziggy's artist? <laughs> I mean, the clues oh, were there, using, people. Uh, using some the, of your the clues, 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 clues were there. Um, all right. Where oh, he would I could have worn my Bowie shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Wow. So, oh. assessing that now, uh, we are going to introduce each of the characters and zoom in on each of you. So, in this moment, uh, standing amongst these idiots, checking this out, how do you look and feel at the moment? I will ask you as soon as I get the screen up, and I'm going to keep talking as if I'm organized <laughs> enough to have it ready already. Okay, here we go. All right, so here in the, the terrace is Oliver playing Saryeth. Saryeth is a high elf wizard level three. Uh, what do we notice about Saryeth that's different than usual? What's his attitude? What's his look? How does he Saryeth is looking at these um, idiots and going like, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it's like Contemptuous? He, he's just, yeah, he's just looking at them like, what is wrong with him? Like, he can't. <laughs> he just doesn't want to be here. Barely containing his contempt. Is sorry, yes. Yeah, very good. All right. Uh, Michael sends his regards. The baby has arrived, so we'll have to see him later. Uh, Sean here is playing Shudian. Shudian is a human fighter level three. Oh, uh, you have a specialty. So did you, uh, your specialty is uh, is divination, I believe, uh, as a mm -hmm. wizard. Yeah. Uh, Shudian, you are a fighter level three, but you've picked a subclass. What kind of fighter are you now? I am a battle master. A battle master you are. So bursting with new tactics and capabilities is Shudian. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, he, he is a human fighter, battle master, level three. What does Shudian look or feel like right now? I want to get into the fray and find out yeah, what to do with these cretins. Okay, <laughs> eager to use your battle master skills perhaps. All right, that was Shudian. Uh, also here, Olenka here is playing Shmaragd. Shmaragd is a dwarven cleric level three. Uh, I, uh, your domain is life, so yeah. that, I know that might be changing, but you're a life mm -hmm. cleric of level three. At this stage, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do we notice different than usual about Shmaragd? Um, different than usual with Shmaragd. Um, nothing as yet, but Shmaragd is, has clocked very much instantly and is looking very much at the, um, the, the posters, uh, of Ziggy in the androgynous side because Shmaragd is, uh, they, mm -hmm. they really resonate with that. Yes, I like he, this version of Ziggy, he, yeah. He, he, she, androgynous <laughs> uh -huh. sort of All right, yeah. appearance yeah. Rather, rather than the, Sort of, I wouldn't even call the other side being hyper masculine, but Always it's a it's a very different yeah. look to <laughs> this, and so Shmaran is really drawn yeah. to this sort of what the what the silver seem to be right, yeah, um, uh, emulating, addressing, um, idoli idolizing what the silver seem to be. Yeah, idolizing. and as you look over, you know, of course, because you're looking there half, you know, the silvers are occupied by us on stage, but like one or two, they're sort of glancing back and they sort of look at you and like they would poke them like, look, they sort of like you know, check you out and they're like, you know, they sort of give you a little, like, okay, cool, at least somebody around here doesn't, you know, doesn't fit the binary. But and, also... And, and Shmaragd is very you know, conscious yeah. of their appearance and really tries to sort of... Mm. To, has, has has a conscious sense of, of what their appearance is. But also is, you can't so. help notice that some of them, they have a rather sort of like a, like a bit of a jealous sort of catty thing, like, 
you know, some of them like look at you and they're like, you know, like, oh, they, they seem to dismiss you. So there seems to be a bit of rivalry there. And again, oh, as they're occupied the stage, they have a sort of a sort of a, a, a cruel a component to, you know, that they, they have some of the very snide faces. You also notice that both of these sets of idiots, by the way, they're often glaring at each other. Like a lot of times they're sort of, they're looking, at each, each side is sort of looking at the other and they're sort of like doing gestures. They largely separated into these two halves. So you notice some, some bad blood apparently between them. Shamarant has, has uncovered some of that. All right, good job. Uh, Jimmy here is playing Vol. Vol, he is a human fighter level two and warlock level one. We have a multi-class going on. And your warlock patron is what? My warlock patron is the Chain Devil's boss. <laughs> <laughs> Many you times on, new job. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. tell me, how does it make you look and feel differently than usual? At the moment, it doesn't so much. It makes me feel more powerful that I can actually you know, use magic in that one. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm trying to keep humble about it. I'm trying mm -hmm. to keep, I mean, everyone here knows, but I'm hoping they do, the enemies won't. Yeah. So I can just surprise them with it. And yeah. I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeve with the good. powers as well. Very good. Now, I think you have the option of, of uh, showing this new thing around your neck. I, I think the rules are not that you have to always show it. It could be tucked underneath. So what, I, do I, don't mind, I don't mind that the party sees it. I just, okay. you know, So do you have it out now? I have it out now. Yeah. It is so unless on your character sheet, you'll, so no. put it on your character yeah. sheet, unless you say like under shirt or in pocket, mm -hmm. I get to assume that it's out unless you specifically yep. say it's not. Mm -hmm. What does it look like, this thing around your neck? It is a jagged piece of the red mirror shards mm -hmm. that we saw the chain devils. Yeah. I do not remember their mi a red mirror fragment. Names. Yeah, yeah, the chain devils um, um, red mirror fragment. You got one now. Surrounded by chain that mm -hmm. leaves around my neck. Yeah, sort of is, seated in the black chain. Is it the chain. chain, like the razor chain that was in the red tower? No, um, the way I th originally saw it was the chain devil would actually extract extract chain from himself. And oh, neat, yeah. And then oh. It might be a rusty chain, it might be a... Oh no, not, oh, not a rusty It might be no. just a... You know, an iron chain, but a yes. small, a small iron, iron chain. chain. Yeah. So it might, it might be a, might have a few little sharp bits here, and they're just to remind you who's boss, but yeah. not enough to make you bleed. That's good. Speaking of blood, uh, the, 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 yes, some I have a scar on, as well. on my thumb now. <laughs> <laughs> so this happened, of course, because it happened before, and this happened in retcon, like maybe when you came down here before you went the, in the, into the, uh, uh, the on the, the way the tower. to. You, sorry, the... I said, oh, I've got somebody for you to meet. Well, let's yeah. do that thing. And so they sort of nipped off to Dude, the cobalt. Dude, I know area. someone cool that you should meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you went down and visited, and the cobalt machine shop is still back up and running. Yeah. Okay, very good. We have a warlock in the house. Uh, that is great. Uh, we have Anthony here is playing Gammy. Gammy is a halfling rogue level two. And uh, what is new about Gammy at this moment? How's Gammy feeling at this moment? Oh, um, slight like smarter than the um, than these most idiots running around, <laughs> but intrigued by the um, potential for a metal concert. <laughs> the, uh, run, run by idiots. Um, <laughs> like the disorder, but the chaos that would be ensuing with metal and idiots. <laughs> just, it's just really intriguing. It sounds like that, that's an unusual combination. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it is. Some of it is. Yeah. Yeah. Half way through. Metal is awesome. What the fuck? It's not even one of metal people. A lot of metal bands are intelligent. Bands, right? Yeah, that's they, true, exactly. They're, they're, they're the fans, on the other hand. Yeah. Shut up! That, that's yeah. what I was thinking of. No, like, I know awesome my friends. I know my, my people. <laughs> my, the water bottle plates. Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, could you, you, there's a light switch behind you, Sean. If you can yeah. click that, I think that's all. That's what's throwing off the uh, the relative sort of color balance. That Ooh. makes sense. That's why. Blue, not yeah. yellow. Exactly. <laughs> that makes Blue, more sense. Yellow. I still think for, for the, Okay, the very good. You have a few followers. You remember Eveli Evelios is an elf that attached to you as you left. Elvish Presley. Elvish Presley. Yes, Elvish Presley, as you've been calling him. I love that name. Evelios, uh, he, he's like, oh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't want to go into that, that, that shrine. I'm going to hang out with the kobolds. You know, I'm, I'm not a fighter, man. I've got a lot to learn. Um, so, like, Shudian, is that, is that cool Elvis with you? Presley. Can I just hang out there? Yeah, oh, man, that's good. My book. 
<laughs> I, I got that, by the time you see me, yeah. I'll learn a few things. Cool. Yeah. Hey, practice. Do, practice. Do, hey, yeah. do you have any of the, that smokeable no. like from yeah. Chop Chop? That Not that sort of practice. No, because it, it makes me inspired, man. Yeah. Can I have a little bit just to inspire me? So I, I learn. I learn. I'm con con concentrated. I should have no? some. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he goes <laughs> off. <laughs> He's off with the cobalt. Do some training. Training. Another drug out. Do some. Yeah. Do some. I do want to confirm something. You had a goblin in a bag. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, that was my. That was Michael. Um, Michael. Michael. Okay. Okay. So, so, you know, well, this makes it easy. Let, let's assume that he let the goblin out and and is at Nylodel. So is the goblin is being cap is captive at Nylodel because mm. you know they pumped the goblin for information. They want to get more information from the goblin. They mm. basically look. It's our goblin attacking our village. We get to keep the goblin. So they're going to keep trying to convince the goblin to maybe go vegan or maybe you know, <laughs> reveal more uh, information. But so the goblin is left at Nylodel. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't know, I don't lights. actually know if the elves are vegan at this point. <laughs> they you, don't want to hurt the plant. They want to, they want to hurt the animals. You did a long rest after coming back from the, uh, the Caves of Chaos, so uh, even though there is time pressure, of course you were wise to do that long rest because now it seems like you've gotten safely into the canyon without being shut out by this elimination show. So finish your long rest upkeep if you haven't done so already. Mm -hmm. I uh, wish we could add okay. extra on to our long rest. Yeah, so actually, erase no, all the damage. Mind. I can, because I'm not and on 19. Your, and, now and, uh, and you have all your hit dice. I hope they don't. Um, I yeah. die. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's damage there, so raise your damage. Yeah, okay. so here are your full hit points. Okay. Okay. Those are your level three. You should have all three of your hit dice. Did anybody here did anybody here have zero hit dice at the end of the last battle? That's a hit dice. Zero hit dice. They'd be recorded there. So, so you didn't oh. go down to one, but you're fine. Um, zero. What is he's level two. When did don't worry about it. Well, what, uh, are any of you currently at zero hit dice? No. I'm at one. Yeah, that's fine. So as long as you had at least one hit die, the way I run the rules, you now have all of your hit dice. So you all have three hit oh. dice to spend. You oh. have two hit dice to spend, so erase, erase all that and just write down two, because you have two hit dice to spend. So, sorry, so do, do I Underneath hit dice, yeah, you can just write down a three. I mean, okay. so just like with hit points, uh, I think it's good in pencil to write cool. down. Your maximum cool. is three, and you're at your maximum, so write down a three. Yeah. Excellent. We had this whole back and forth while that explained it three times before it was <laughs> so I don't want to do it again! So, yeah, you're, so just, nice, just nice. take the win and say you got all of your hit dice. Awesome, I work. Get <laughs> uh, and our health comes up to maximum? Yes, your health is at your maximum hit points now. Mm -hmm. Would that include my health because of the deal I just no, made? No, you're reminded. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. so just wow. to, to, to make it worth something. But it's not, your max didn't go down by one. It's just no. you temporarily, it's like the wound hasn't quite closed yeah. up yet. Next a long rest, it'll close up. It stings a little. Yeah. <laughs> Even next short <laughs> rest, it'll clear up. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every, every time if you clench your finger, it just slips again. Would that still Yes, you could use hit die now. No, 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 I mean during the... Mm -hmm. Fight and everything. If I had to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Now, now you're just down one hit point, just as if you just got cut by something regular. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as you're resting, you get to have a little conversation with each other, big, if you big, like. Big <laughs> Which of you wants to say something to somebody else uh, as you're resting in that treehouse? This is before you met the idiots, right? Okay. Good. I was about to you, say, where are we taking this? Yeah. This you, rest? You, you, so we're retroacting this. This is while you're in in the Elven Village. But mm -hmm. was there anything that happened in that Elven Village during your long rest? Did you have a conversation with each other in the Elven Village? Is there something that you wanted to know about each other? Say to each other. Hey guys, I've got magic powers now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah you, you would have been getting visited by the yeah. theme, so even though maybe you, would, you didn't until you woke, you woke up with these powers. Yeah. yeah. So when you wake up in the morning, you have that. Just wake up and breathe fire. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Welcome yeah. to the magic club. Okay. Well, how yeah. do you have magic? What? Yes, I did a bit of a deal. A deal. Yeah. With, with an you. angel. Yeah. I'm not going to say right now, um, but I can create. Illusions. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make this your first illusion of? Oh, let's say a little cat. <laughs> <laughs> a little frozen cat. Yes, just frozen <laughs> in one space. What is the nature of your magic? How have you become across? Uh, I'd rather how have you not come say into right this magic? Now. Mm. Are you a wizard now? Are no, you? I'm not a wizard now. I was betting yeah, that. Have, have you had a, a deity Elizabeth. come and speak to you um, in the middle of the night? Is your parent and are you a now dragon? A cleric? It, it, it is. It is a more powerful being than myself. He's a warlock. <laughs> He's a <laughs> bloody warlock. Let him tell the story. I get. Uh, I get. How can I put this? I'm not a cleric. Go on. No, I'm not a cleric. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no, no. Just think he's a warlock. No. Just I, keep it, keep it. So he's too lucky I, to I, 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 I take the <laughs> I take the necklace out and just say, this should answer everything. It, it doesn't. Why do Explain. I recognize <laughs> that? I recognize that. <laughs> I say at this moment, like the you, you see your own reflection, you have a sort of weird reflection, but the reflection fades and you see like the chain down, like 
<laughs> Throw waving at you. <laughs> Don't join the two thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the deal of the kiss? That's right, because he was, no. a, he was a smarmy, like, used car, yeah, exactly. car salesman, sort of. Thank you, yeah. You hear his voice like, any of you could take it, you could make a deal. Like, it's, a very, it's a very good arrangement. Not interested, I'm already <laughs> dealing with one magical being. Thank you very much. Sure he is. So you said illusions. Hit me up illusions a and an eldritch blast as well. Is that offensive? Like it an is. offensive attack? Yes. Okay. I knew what you meant. It can be offensive. Both ways can be handled. <laughs> Do you demonstrate it? <laughs> Um, Elvish. I, 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 I aim for an area that is not going to be a tree. tree. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, can we avoid angering any more <laughs> yeah, so we, we, elves, we, are, we already have the angering the elves. So uh, as this happens... Actually, speaking about totally. the elves, what Your Elvish Blast, yeah, so just uh, the moment the Elvish Blast, is you just, like, this This voice comes, like, infernal, sort of burbles up out yeah. of your throat. You just feel, like, temporarily possessed, and you just see, I mean, you can only imagine what he looks like as his power possession, and he points, and just this bolt of some, what color is the bolt of energy? Bolt. This, this purple, one, yes. sort of jagged bolt comes out, yeah. and you hear it often, it's like, what tarnation was that? Hey, what was that? <laughs> you hear all the elves, like, what the hell? I, what, did you hear this? It's a, that light, you know, light was coming from the ground. What the fuck was I, going I, on? You know, all around. I just want to double check something again. <laughs> I'd like yes. to start gambling with the elves in the village and speaking elvish at the same time. So no one knows. I, I make a five foot tall picture of a cat. In <laughs> like a big cat just to distract. <laughs> Looks like I saw like, well, that's a cat. I don't recall them bringing yes. a cat statue here before. It, no, it's five foot, let's face it. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. most noticeable. Okay. I, I was actually going to ask if we're still able to have a conversation. Yes, please. What was with the mother elf? Sort of dissing us mm-hmm. like that. I'll take did more of it. So that's that? definitely something to investigate. They, they, yes. He mm. did. Yeah, but she did. But she also um, signaled to someone behind us. Mm. Could so have been. Up with that. Could have been our little Elvish Presley being signaled to come along with us. Oh, you don't trust. Yeah, them. you wouldn't know it at the time. No, I, I, ret- retrospect, I, but maybe. Then, I think yeah. that in maybe this more. case, it's not that I don't trust them so much as they want to follow and make sure mm, we're that doing we can be trusted. Yes. Mm. And if yeah. and if we can show that oh this Elvish Presley, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> and if we can I show know, that Elvish Presley. No, I like Elvish Presley. Elvish Presley. <laughs> it's not in the book. You write it in. I'm not writing it in. I liked it in Elvish Presley. Can I also retcon one other thing? On the way, as we're walking, we find some mud. We accidentally trip over Elvish Presley, so he's got a pompadour. <laughs> so I'll slip back. So, oh, I, I kind of like my hair this way. <laughs> Like looking at you and mm-hmm. her, that's pretty cool. Oh, sorry. <laughs> using a stick to sort of. Yeah, sorry, I cool. have to do this. No, no. Can someone remind me why are we calling him Elvish Presley? What made? What was the? Uh, what prompted that? It was a joke that popped up, and then yeah. we started, and we started like, running with a it. A random thought. <laughs> okay. It's a yeah. musical thing because we're. Kind we of called him musical. Presley, and then I, yeah. someone said Same Elvish, and I said. It's something to do with the Presley. musical because we've we've got, you know. <laughs> So too many we've got Ziggy, we've got the metal, we've got the... <laughs> so Why not an Elvish Presley? I'm just waiting for the fire and the th- flames to come into it in some way, shape or form. Uh, I think I must have missed the musical link and that's why I'm like, I don't understand where Elvish Presley comes from. Great. Well, so I, I also now have the, uh, some Battle Master abilities, manoeuvres, uh-huh. which my handles. Uh, so there's a manoeuvring attack which I can help somebody move manoeuvre into a better position during uh-huh. battle. So, uh, again? Uh, so writing, sorry. Uh, I can help someone move into a better position in battle. Cool. Um, so say you're in danger, you could move away from that, I think. Um, but you can also move into a more advantageous position, mm-hmm. which will help you out. Without provoking attacks of opportunity, I yes. believe. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Correct me if I'm wrong, it's just basically you're moving us during your attack. I believe as, so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rally also as another one which is handy as well, so I can give you temporary hit points. Ooh. You oh. can give away them? Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> go You've got to hit Oh, and the uh, sweeping attack will also have a chance to attack another opponent when I do one attack on one opponent. It will ah. spill over. So. I like the story of maybe in the Elvish Village was some sort of like book, you know, of like battle tactics, like an old library, and maybe you were sort of reading as you're falling asleep, and, and as you got more heroic and leveled up, you know, the stuff really sank in. Do you think maybe you learned some of these maneuvers by reading this book that you found in the Can you try that? <laughs> Great. I want to gamble with the elves, but I, I don't want to, I want to gamble <laughs> money with them for information. So like, 
I want to know more about the village, but also why they weren't keen to go with ah, us. Ah, sure. And like, they, they've got secrets, I've got money, and if they sure. can trade back for so we... That's you're right. going to need a lot of wait, money wait, to wait, convince wait. them. You've got money? Got Where's money. that money that you spent, you owe me? <laughs> <laughs> what money? <laughs> Um, this would be a great thing to do uh, before using a stamp and uh, doing it now. I think yeah, yeah. We, 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 but I don't want to necessarily take the time because no, I'm not too much wreck on. But I would love to do that. So yeah, okay. you know, you're very good at spending stamps and and using that stuff. And of course, other people can spend stamps for when you. When you're free, do we'll do it. Awesome. Well, yeah, that's very much so. <laughs> what we'll see how that works out after you burned one of their <laughs> Okay. Great. Retcon well, now jumps. that was your long rest. We've done a lot of retcon. Now we're back in here. So this you are. Win. We're back in the present moment. You are facing the red idiots, and uh, they form that phalanx. And you've talked to them to realize enough that you don't want to do this stupid job. You need to figure out some other way to talk through. Well, the red idiots say at one point, "So, well, you actually, uh, you came at a pretty special time. You know, uh, I want to like take a look at this because they they now think you're kind of cool. Like they, they've let their guard down. I mean, they're not letting you through, but they feel like letting you see. Like, check this out." and the phalanx parts. You see one of the dirty cots, the backpacker hostile cots there, has got ropes tied on all four corners. Uh, and next to it is an inverted milk crate, obviously milk crate, because that's what you do in a, in a hostel. And on the inverted milk crate are some crude surgical instruments and a raw, tiny chaos shard. Like, hey. As it is, um, like, yeah, so, you know, like, uh, yeah, my name's Brad, uh, and you recognize he's the guy that was in the ice. Remember when that guy popped out and fought, uh, fought Fogram, the, the dude that had, like, no shirt on? He was frozen in the ice underneath the red dungeon after you finished the red thing. You, all, you each fought an individual monster. Oh, oh buff dude! Yeah, he was a buff dude. He's buff dude. He's buff dude. It's like, yeah, you know, I, uh, I yeah, yeah, you know, like I, I kind of sort of my time. as he's saying, like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of ready for, for my moment. And like, yeah, yeah, so they're like, yeah. So Brad, dude, is gonna, is gonna. There's something very special gonna happen at that time. Mm, 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 mm. Your, your mirror starts vibrating. <laughs> it's just sick. <laughs> just walk off. I need to go take momentum. a shit. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> <Put a> momento. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, you know, whether you're away or not, but, uh, but you pull it out and it's the channel. Uh, so, I have a favor to call in on your contract. Awesome, let's do <laughs> this. Uh, will you please uh, bring, bring me back to the group? Uh, they should see uh, what you have. Coolsies. You come back in and they're like, what? They're like, look, and they're holding up this mirror with, the, with a devil you know, in so, it. So, I'm not a warlock like the weirdo over there. Oh. I <laughs> made a, a organized contract like McDonald's. It's fine. It's good. It's above board. I'm telling everyone about. No, it's okay, dude. No, he's he's gonna implant me. It's all right. I was gonna be done by a professional. That's cool. Yeah, you, yeah, you like, uh, dude. Professional. Is it, it's not about you, man. At the moment, it's about <laughs> everyone else in this party. Oh, right. Know your place. You're lower on the totem pole than you think you are. Oh man. Okay. Professional. <laughs> I thought I'd feel more powerful at this moment in particular. This guy named Balasar is interested. Balasar, he, he's he's one of the Reds. He's sort of in the corner. He's been noodling on a guitar, like a pretty junky guitar. He's been sort of noodling around a guitar, and and it's like, oh, so, you know, Balasar, uh, you know, but Balasar is going to implant me. And but you've got something to say. Like, well, Balasar is going to was going to do the implantation. Are you going to do it like instead of Balasar? Brother, I'm better than Balasar. Suck it, Balasar. Yeah, he's going to do it right. He gets on the cot. He's like, all right, come on, tie me down. But then the devil says, uh, uh, not, uh, j just one moment. I actually had somebody else in mind for this particular honor. Uh, Imeril, uh, would you please uh, have the, uh, get on the cot, please? And Imeril's like, oh, well, I guess it's my moment. He stands up. He looks very confident. Brother, dude, you just got here. I mean, we were talking for a few weeks through the mirrors fragment and stuff. But, man, you got to earn your place. Like, dude, I'm not going to stand for this. But the devil enters. He's like, uh, it is for me to say what is going to happen. And you, uh, was it Brad is your name? Why don't you just back the fuck off? It is time for <laughs> Imeril to get implanted by Sarya. Can this I is going to happen. Double check. Imeril was a red idiot. Imeril, he, he's now dressed like a red idiot. He's yeah, the same, he's, he's, same he's, wood he's, elf that you've because, always known. But he's, 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 he's now dressed like he's it. He's ended up in that Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's dressed like it. Okay. So, the devil gets Brad to back off and... So all the other idiots, they rally and they call Emerald, you can do this, bro. You can do this, man. You study well. You're a believer. It's time for you to climb the great iron chain. They all chant, great iron chain, great iron chain. And they yeah, all right. I think I'm ready for this. Okay. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment a long time. I've done a lot of research. I've done a lot of reading. This is definitely the way to sort out the problems of this world. All right. Oh, take that, mom. You're going you're, you're gonna, to you're gonna be, you're going to you're gonna change back the Elven village. That's for damn sure. He lies down and his, his brothers tie him down. 
Short, uh, long story short, you are instructed to uh, use the surgical instruments and the chaos shard to implant him. Uh, are you going to follow the devil's instructions? Do I have to use the surgical instrument? Can I use the, my mirror shard as a, as a, to cut into him to put, it, put the thing in? The devil says, uh, it, uh, you can do an, an initial incision with it if that's what you but you should use the, uh, to crack yeah. through the, uh, what do you call this, a bony thing? Uh, the sternum. You should use the actual instrument. I do not want something bad to happen to our new good friend. Here. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, maybe cutting him first. Yeah, cutting him first with the frame. Get the heels. Like, right, I'm looking at her. I'm trying to think, is there something I should in, intervene and yeah. stop you from doing this? <laughs> 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 I can't see it. My alignment. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Now, if you're an evil character, you're still expected to get along with the group, but you can pursue evil agenda outside. However, this is the kind of thing, and we can freeze right now. If if this were to happen, so let's say time freezes, and you're considering, you know, so you're considering whether to go ahead with it. Now, you're on contract to do so. Mm -hmm. However, this group doesn't really realize how direly you've been motivated. And at this moment, if this were afterwards and you are having a team meeting like, hey, sorry, we're not sure we're cool with you continuing with our group. If you're going to be doing this shit, like, it doesn't, group, it doesn't align with their group goals. There would be a vote. A majority vote would mean your character, not use a player, okay. your character would get voted out. Yes. Anybody have any input on what, if, whether it does this? If you have this team meeting later on, do you think that you would be arguing for me kicked out of the group or admitted to the group? And would you have a short statement in defense of yourself? If you vote me out, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> Everybody can do one short yeah. statement to just to sort of reflect. This is not an actual vote. This may be a preview of what your vote or your main question or problem would be. How do you really feel about this that's about to happen? Yeah. Your character. How's your character? Your mind is starting to really sort of question. I mean... Shmara has conflict themselves with their deity and the mm. the role that's been placed on them for being a cleric, but and you know can s understands the whims and, and of a, a powerful being and sometimes out of your control. But this doesn't sort of sit that well with Shmara. Do you think that if he did this implantation and and you know, was fulfilling the reds, you know, of course making the making a, a new red, someone more powerful, and there were a team meeting afterwards, do you think Shmara would would vote Saras to get out of the group or would grudgingly keeps Arthur in the group. Oh, I cannot answer that right this minute. Okay, that's fine, that's fair. Anybody else got a statement one way or the other? Um, my character is lawful neutral on this one, mm -hmm. but um, the contract was signed. The con contract has to be done, and he's doing it for his own self-preservation at this point as well. Very lawful. But at the same time, you've got to also consider Brad what? Not Brad, it, who's the Emerald? Emerald. Emerald, Emerald, Emerald is, wants is willing to, to do this. Now, it doesn't mean that this guy is going to actually succeed and and keep this guy alive. <laughs> <laughs> he might kill him accidentally. <laughs> is it is the contract dependent on this person being alive afterwards? There's but a lot of preferably. fiber in the contract. Yeah. That I've gone across. <laughs> preferably, you don't have to work. <laughs> I kind of do. <laughs> Okay, so so uh, briefly, do you think that that you would vote him out or keep him in the group if you went ahead and did this? I think I would keep him in, but if it turned out that another one that he would uh, do later on would be more evil, more vicious, more of a let's I don't know how to mm -hmm. describe it. So let's just go with an answer. So it's trying to get borderline yeah, for you, borderline, and then. He would become Very more well. after that because we don't know how this this is going to affect him. It could sure. be something that comes in later that uh, affects the chaos mm -hmm. shard, Fair affects enough. the person. Uh, either of you, what what would you what would you say if this I'm, were a team meeting after? This I'm, I'm a meh at the moment, but because we're in a situation now where you know. There's a lot of stuff happening, so... Um, yeah, when we freeze time like this, almost like yeah. Sarith knows you, so he mm -hmm. can imagine what you are going to say once mm -hmm. the scene is over. So you're kind of giving a preview of, of what you are going to say. He can kind of predict... Before he actually does it, he can kind of predict what you're going to say, but you're going to fill him in on, on what you yeah. think you would say. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. No. Not, not a clear vote out? No. 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 It's just... At the moment. <laughs> at the moment, it's... Uh, yeah. Okay. Sounds a little borderline, we're, we're but still we're, a lot we're, of we're at a precipice. Okay. Yeah. How about uh, Gammy? Gammy's, um, like, roguish, but not really evil and wants to look after himself, so... But at the same time, we've had adventures with this, with um, Sariath, mm -hmm. so Sariath's got himself into a predicament. <laughs> and, 
and maybe it wasn't made of the best decisions. I don't, as Anthony, I don't know what the model was. was. <laughs> 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 but um, whatever they were, people make mistakes, and you get yourself into a spot where you have to see it through sometimes. Mm -hmm. So. We so learning about the contract mm -hmm. would, would make you say, yeah. like, maybe he shouldn't be voted out because maybe he made a mistake by signing a contract with yeah. And he then you can, <laughs> if it gets really bad, then then we have to <laughs> preserve ourselves. Mm -hmm. If he gets like taken over That's by right. the, the devil thing, mm -hmm. then we have to, you know, like a zombie, right? You have to you have to kill the host. <laughs> but, if, but, if cure, but if there was a cure, <laughs> I mean, that sort of idea, right? He's going to sleep with one open. That's what he's. Yeah, saying. but if there's a, if there was a, if there was, if you could just chain the zombie up and then get a cure, or just ignore the zombie, then you, you wouldn't need to kill them, right? But when the zombie becomes a threat, so what I'm saying is, at this point, we do nothing. Okay. Cool. All right. So, given that, do you decide to do the implantation after? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All I right. Didn't, I didn't think there was a choice for him in this matter. Do a do, do a one time. Oh, he used to be coward. Do a one-time medicine. I am still a coward. <laughs> so, he, so the devil is telling you exactly so what. As this is happening, by the way, uh, Imrul's chanting. A lot of ways chanting is in Infernal, which you understand, but it's very yeah. archaic Infernal. But it's the kind of things, like it sort of like, seems like the tenets of the Red Philosophy about the Great Chain cool, and about right. domination, preserving order, fighting demons. Mm -hmm. The brothers around him, the bros, are all sort of chanting sort of broken Infernal some common, some of the common really sounds like they're heavy metal lyrics, not really <laughs> like something like that. You know? Erase so, the pain. Yeah. Um, but between that, there's this sort of building sense that of ritual not. about it. As you are instructed by the devil to now use, put away the mirror and to use this thing to punch through the sternum to make the hole. Let's so it's like, it's like, you know, basically aim it and then just take a hammer and just bang. Yeah. Okay, roll a medicine check. Medicine. Uh, um, yes. Wisdom, and if you're, of course, proficient oh, in medicine, oh, you get to add. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Is everyone okay with maybe getting the air on just no to problem. circulate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Air? No worries. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing long sleeves, results. and I'm just thinking mm -hmm. maybe yeah, sure. I'll yeah, 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 well, that, That's one I've got changed so before. Yeah. It's a nine. A nine. Oh, okay. It doesn't go very well, but doesn't kill him. So. It's like, oh, you oh, know, blood starts spurting out of the just like, shit, shit, all right, get, get, get the shard in, get the shard in quickly. We do not want to lose him. But he's losing blood rapidly. He's just a commoner. Like, Emerald's got maybe 10 hit points. Like, he's just a commoner, right? No he's no game. rapidly turning pale. So you now do another medicine check as you try to shove uh, accurately in there. 11. 11? Okay. It looks better than 10. It's good. So you kind of get, you have to jam it in a couple times. Like it goes in sort of the wrong way. You jam it again. Like, Blood spurting all like over you. Trying to charge your phone while you're drunk. Training. Yeah. A training yeah. nurse. But when you pull it out, uh, for, for a moment, the devil's like, now, now let, let, let go. Let, let go of the pinchers. So leave them inside and uh, let go. And you see, do, 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 do. You see, like, the pinchers are moving with Emerald's heart. Because, that's good, that's good. Now release the pinchers and take them out very straight. And you do that. You just pull the pinchers out straight. And it's still bleeding, but the bleeding stops. And Emerald's like, I, I, I'm not sure if I feel anything. But he just tells Chang's like, wait, 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 I feel something. Oh, oh, yeah. And he's pulling at the ropes. And you just see him just get bigger. You see, like, his muscles start to fill in. You see his body, like, lengthens by a few inches, uh, several centimeters. And, like, your know, hair breaks out on his arms. Like, he gets sort of, this, like, this stubble around his beard. His brow gets kind of hairy. He's like, yeah, yeah, his veins are all bloody. Fuck yeah. He snapped out of the rope. He stands up. I was like, it worked. Yeah, yeah. Praise Ray Banfield. Woo, woo, woo. And they're like, cheer, yeah, they're all cheering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All his brothers are cheering. And he looks more powerful, and the, the scar is it's still dribbling blood, it's still a fresh thing, but it seems like he's gotten all of his health back, and he just seems more powerful. Like he seems like a fighter now. So, yeah, yeah, it suck it! He goes, yeah, like, suck it, I'm your boss, you. I'm your boss, I'm your, not to, to you all, he's like, I'm your boss, well, man. No, you're not. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does that, like, he, does, he tries, well, I'm your boss, I'm your boss. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just and all of them just fall into start to charge up something at me. You've been Brad's, like, <laughs> you can you tell, like, Brad's, like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you're my boss, bro, okay, fine, that's all right, that's fair, I'll get my moment, all right, what do you want us to do? He says, spar, 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 spar. I, I'm going to kick all your asses, spar, spar, spar. So he calls for a spar, which they seem to know is part of the ritual here. They are excited by his implementation, he's bulging with muscles, he's intimidating, dominating everyone around, and he says, uh, so, and, and he says, you, you all, I, well, I can tell you, you want to find out more about what's in here, he says, you know, Emerald says, he says, all right, 
Oh, you, you, you want to prove yourself? Now let's see you pussies are made of. Come on, let's spar together. Us against you. We can beat you. And they're challenging you to a spar. Yeah. This is, but you get this like, if you beat us in a spar, then we'll just look the other, we'll just look the other way while you do whatever you like with that iron door. But I don't think you're going to win because I'm so tough. So he's challenging you to a formal fight called a spar. Here's how it works if you decide to do it. Each of you is going to exchange blows with Emeril and one of the other idiots. So basically, you each get a hit against each other. Whoever does the mo whichever side does the most damage to the other side total wins the spar. So it's just pure hit point damage. Nobody's going to die, and if somebody does go down, you know they get to be stabilized right away. Everybody will help stabilize. Um, it's just a just a fair way to do it. You think this is a way to get through uh, that. If you, uh, you're you all at full health, so there's no reason to rest beforehand, uh, and they want to do it right away. So if you do this, you're quite confident that they will they will not hassle you as you try to get deeper into the, this red-themed uh, iron door. Do you do it? Um, Emerald looks tough, but he's, he's not like a devil himself. You know, he's, just, he's a big, muscular guy with a mace. The other ones, they have sort of like clubs and maces and things, but they don't look magical or especially strong. And each of you will take kind of one shot of each, and you get to do one shot of each of them. Anyone else have, you know, does not have anything that isn't sharp or pointy? <laughs> I mean, well, I've got a great axe, I've got a javelin, I don't have anything that will not cut the... Oh, it's fine. No, 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 you're expected. Yeah, they, they they have clubs, but some of them have, oh. have knives. So it's fine to use sharp well. weapons. Okay. Or spells. So you're looking for, like, bludgeoning weapons. Oh, I'm, I'm just hoping we don't kill them. No, that's to... fine. No, by D&D &D rules, you never have to, with a melee shot, you can always choose to knock someone out and still kill them mm. anyway. Oh. And even if for whatever reason, they'll, so what you do is you reach them to zero, mm -hmm. and then you, they automatically stabilize. Say, I choose to knock them out. That means they're stabilized at zero. Even if you don't say that or decide to, like, really scare them, somebody else can stabilize them okay. quite quickly. I say we don't spar them and we go talk to the silver idiots over there who may have another way in through the thing so well, we don't lose hit points maybe because someone is fragile as shit <laughs> there's there was the silver idiots but there were also some silver type officers mm -hmm. uh, they're um, not here so luckily it's here. only the idiots yeah, okay. the officers are very dangerous so we they're saw them the first time but they're not here you're currently. afraid of them coming and that's why you want to do this because every once in a while officers come through anything that once they see you the alarm will go up right now the idiots are, are raising the alarm yeah, gotcha, they, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so you consider looking at silver side the silver side like I said there's a stage blocking the silver keyhole and every time that you look over they sort of shush you there's somebody performing on the stage um, I've got to describe what's happening on this silver Please stage. Please do. Uh, Please. 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 Is it, is it <laughs> can, can Lee without, living without hey, you? Hey, yeah. Actually, actually, no. we've got to get ready for this one. So <laughs> they, <Please. laughs> All right. So, uh, so she is up on a stage. She has sort of mousy brown hair that's all cut to different lengths. It's gelled and all sort of sculpted and sticking out in all directions. She's quite pale, but sort of like, like a red sort of rouge on her face. She is wearing a backwards tuxedo. It's the only way to describe it. It looks exactly like a tuxedo, but it's just facing the wrong way. She is, uh, she's got a crude approximation of what looks like a violin, but it doesn't seem to be a working violin. It's either a broken down violin, she's just carved it herself. And she's got a bow that's kind of like, kind of like a glowing bow. It sort of like has some basic sort of magic or phosphor on it. And she's sort of like pretending to play the violin, but she's sort of, she's sort of doing these jerky sort of motions and she's reciting poetry. She's just like saying sort of cryptic sort of phrases once in a while. And she's sort of playing, she makes weird noises. And she speaks some more. Oh, God, it's her chop chop, isn't it? Every, <laughs> nobody I've seen before. All the other silvers around are watching and just completely talking amongst themselves, criticizing her, giving her ideas, giving her contradictory ideas of how to improve the act. She's trying to take notes. She does it again. They seem to be in an intense sort of critique and rehearsal session. And every time you look over there, it's like you're looking at the silver and goes, shh, go, go, go away, go away. And it seems like it would irritate them if you wanted to clear the stage out of the way to get through the silver keyhole. So going, so the silver idiots are not in the mood to speak to you right now. Mm. So, do you do this? You, you think it's a surefire way to get through? Otherwise, you really don't know how else you're going to get through that red, that, uh, that iron door. Do we want to actually go through the, uh, on the red? Well, there's only two, so there's, there's two ways deeper yeah. in the shrine which you yeah. need to go. The silver key hole, which is blocked by the stage, you don't think that's possible, and that iron door. And they don't want to let you through the iron door unless you do the spar with them. Mm -hmm. They say if you win the spar, 
Ferris Fair will look the other way while you, you, you do whatever you can. They, they seem confident. It's like, uh, you know, we, don't, we think it's a bad idea, but you, know, you, can, you, can, you can try to work your way in there. You, know, you, can talk, you, can, you can attack the bosses if you want. Like, that's our way, right? Yeah, if you, can attack, if you can attack your boss, you should, right? But you, I, we don't want to get in trouble for letting you through. But we'll make a deal with you. If, if the spar, if, if, you, if, you, if you prove to us, you know, we'll let you through. If you can attack your bosses, you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, helpful. Yeah, you can kill your boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You take take place your boss. That sounds like. Uh, so you can tell they can be convinced. There's the, 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 that the spar would be the first step towards convincing them to get through. Do you want to become the new bosses? If, if we, you team up with us, we go and attack the boss together, and you. Yeah, become we the think new you bosses. suck. So you know, just prove uh, you don't suck, uh, and maybe yeah. yeah. As far as we know, you just suck. We hear shit like this all the time. Like, we always have we always have bros coming up here saying they should be our boss. And given all these other adventurers have wandered up to the terrace and haven't made it through into the door, they've actually got sucked into the idiot pile. Yeah, you can. We yeah. are better than them. Yeah, you can work. Yeah, just 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 yeah. Grab grab some rocks. You can if you get a shot. We need to. We're better than through. going for the rocks. Well, then fucking prove it. <laughs> spar, 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 spar. I take out the chaos shard on the necklace that I've been saving for this entire time. Huh? In my pocket. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so. I've already got one, man. I don't need it. <laughs> uh, I know. You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get one. It's like, uh, you gotta get one out of the rock. You gotta get a new one, man. That doesn't count. Who says that I have to? Do bosses. That? The bosses. That's the rule, man. The bosses that you say they suck. Yeah. Well, hey, but they're in charge, man. We respect hierarchy. But you don't respect the hierarchy. We're following the rules. The We're following the rules. The rules that say that you have to kill your bosses. To try and get your bosses away, respect your boss. That's just the way it works. Your your bosses your bosses know it makes your bosses better. If your boss knows that you can kill him, he's going to do a better job as being boss. He's not Think doing about it. it. Yeah, have a look at the idiots. Think about the idiots. Hey man, as soon as I'm ready to kill my boss, I'm, I'm going to go for it. I think we're going to have to spar with them. <laughs> I was going to say, Spar yeah. is 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 looking more. <laughs> <Getting more bad. laughs> like, yeah. You know, hitting these guys okay. seems better and better all the time. Okay, yeah, so yeah, here's yeah. how it's going to work. They're a bit frustrated. Uh, Especially, Shmar is going to be pleased to be able to beat down someone who probably would not look upon them exactly. very well. Exactly, yeah, 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 right, yeah. I can take down these, these frat boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, so we all they're referring to all of you as dudes, including you. Like, when they do, dudes, they're including you. They're like, they haven't quite done it on the Good, other okay, good, good, good. <laughs> who good. wants to be the first? The best way to figure out how the sparring works, everybody's got to have a go. I'll give you a shot first up. All right, sorry, I was like, all right, and planner, yeah, bro, sure. let's go for it. All right. It was your... You, you started it. <laughs> so, so you, so uh, so you, uh, basically, is a sort of circle forms, and you stand up against a pair of the two reds. However, only one's going to attack at a time. Okay. You can buff yourself. You're allowed to cast a spell on yourself that makes you feel stronger. You can try to hide, you know, in the dim light, you know, and, and do, get your sneak attack that way. You're allowed to cast, but you cannot cast spells on each other. You cannot. Oh, you cannot buff <laughs> each other. You can only do things to yourself. So you're facing a pair of these reds. One is just a regular idiot. Uh, he doesn't have a chest scar. And the other one is Emerald, uh, who you know, is, is uh, looking strong. So here's how the deal makes. So the first thing is the idiot takes an attack on you, sorry, yes. So let's do this. Coolsies. Uh, you, you can buff yourself first. So before this happens, there's no oh, spell you, there. You, uh, can, you can buff yourself with something. False now remember, you're at the beginning of a long day. So using your spell strategically is going to be very important. So you got to. False life Consider that. at the start. For the is that a cantrip or a it's spell? It's a spell, level one. Okay, I'm going to use one of your level one spells for false life. What does it look like as false life takes over? It's a new spell. It, it looks like uh, corpses and hands of corpses and skulls sort of like um, appear on my body. Yeah. And then they sort of like look like, like I've been covered with like with the dead and then it fades away. It doesn't look like anything anymore. But, right. it, but you can obviously tell that something has happened. Yeah. So as this idiot takes a swing with his mace at you, Emeril kind of, he kind of sidesteps around in a sort of, sort of this distracting way, like Emeril sort of like takes sort of like a stutter step towards you, and there's something commanding about his presence that you sort of get distracted by him, so when the idiot swings at you, he has advantage. Something about these guys working as a pair, they get advantage for their blows. That's one thing you've just learned. With advantage, and a 21, I believe he hits your AC. <laughs> You get wow. hit for seven points of damage. Yay. Sorry, math. 20 minus 7. 13. Thank you. All right. Only 20. Only you only now 20. get to take a shot at the idiot who just swung at you with any spell or weapon or thing that you like. Chill touch. Okay. Oh, okay. The chill croc. touch, uh, yes. do they, is it a spell attack or do they do a saving throw? Uh, I don't you want me to try, try to use spells that you already know. If you don't know it, pick a different one. 
Look it up between spells, but let's see spells the already. Um, create bonfire then. Okay, create bonfire. They do a saving throw. This is a dexterity saving throw. All right. A nine is surely not enough. He burns in the bonfire. How much damage does the bonfire do? I have to look that up. Okay. I'll, I've got it here. Roll a d8, please. Eight. Eight! Okay. You do damage to. That's great. You do damage to. All right. As he does, that nearly kills him. Like he's just a regular sort of weak ass person, right? Here, uh, pay attention. Sorry. So, so he's he's just a regular he's just a regular weak ass guy. Mm -hmm. He's like, ah, oh fuck. Okay. All right. Fine. He backs off. So now Emerald's standing there alone. When Emerald's turn to take a swing at you, he does not get advantage because he no longer has his buddy next to him. So good job for getting rid of his buddy. Emerald takes a swing at you. With a 20, I believe, that hits you, but not with advantage. You just roll that fair and square. Mm -hmm. He does seven points of bludgeoning damage to you. Cool. Thump. Whoa. He surprises you with his speed, and he gets to attack twice with a multi-attack. So do your damage there. Stop now you know that Emerald is strong enough to have multi-attack. You're learning more about the reds. So you know that they get that advantage if they got a buddy, and you know they can attack twice. Ooh, lucky me, lucky him. I rolled an 18 for my second one. Yep, yeah, here we go. Three points of bludgeoning damage. And went down to three. Seven and three. <laughs> we should have talked to that bloody violin. <laughs> the silver side with the stand. <laughs> oh. It was not an option. That's all right. Now, you take a shot at Emerald. Any way you like. Everybody um, get ready. So get, prepare for your own turns here. So we do this quick. I'm going to sleep him. Just off the bat, just put him on his ass. Yeah, it wouldn't count as damage. Okay, um, then it wasn't count as damage. Uh, bonfire again. Okay, Bonfire, he does another saving throw here. I'll, I, I like rolling saving throws this way. Oh my goodness! Oh, okay. He jumped, he's seen the Bonfire before, <laughs> the dice obviously knew it. He jumps out of the way and no damage is done to the bond, to him by the Bonfire. We don't like that dice, do we? <laughs> the big one. No, I don't like any cool. dice. <laughs> okay. We'll get rid of that. All right. That was Saryath. Who's next? Okay. All right. Uh, so the idiot takes a shot at you. Again, he has advantage because he's got. So em Emerald quite quickly gets sort of patched. Emerald has hardly taken any damage anyway, mm -hmm. but Emerald's getting patched up between all these things. He seems to have a fountain of, uh, of health helping him out. With advantage, the idiot swings at you. With advantage, it's a 16 against your AC. Uh, I. I'm 17, so... I'm hey, you deflected it. bounces off your armor. Oh, shit, he says. So that doesn't do it. You get to take a shot at the idiot. I will do that. Okay. Yes. Yes. Go for it. Just be, everybody be ready to go. We're going to try quicker combat oh, as we can. Guy. So no damage from him. What do you do to him? Go for um, it. I'm rolling. Um, I will... Uh, uh, just, uh, great X. Okay. So so roll your D20. Roll your X. D20. Yeah. Uh, D20 is right. Yeah. 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 Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, no, no. Okay, no, not no, enough. No, you no, miss. No, nothing. All right. No. Emerald takes a shot at you. Because the buddy is there, he has advantage on these shots against you, Shudian. So the first swing of the mace is a 20 against you, Shudian. Yes. You get thumped for four points of damage. Yeah. Okay, cool. He is multi-tacking, and he still has advantage. He's still his buddy next to him they didn't get rid of. Mm -hmm. The second swing of his mace is a 21. That does six points of damage. Okay. Ten total. Now you can take a shot at Emerald. Okay, I will do that. Uh, great X. Okay, yes. roll it. Uh, six. Uh, six plus uh, what am I? Three. Three. No, five. 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 Yeah. yeah. Saving throw. Give me a total. Uh, so somebody do the math for him, or you do the math yourself. But what, either way, I need a total. Fourteen. Fourteen is good enough. Yeah. Actually, he's not armored at all. He's not very fast on his feet. You hit him. Do your damage against him. D uh, twelve. No, D twelve. Uh, yep. Uh, still rolling. Uh, Plus three. three. Don't seven. step on the four. Seven. Yeah, seven. Okay, seven damage there. So far, the Reds have done twenty-seven points of damage. You all have done only fifteen points of damage. They are winning so far. Who is next? Yeah. Uh, do you want to watch that? Sure. Who's ready? Yeah. All right, Gammy. Um, I right. have a short sword, so. All right. I'll um. Yeah, so Gammy, so the, the first one, the first shot, he'll, he'll eventually, even if you hide, he'll eventually find you, right? So, okay. so let's just fast forward to him taking yeah. a shot at you. 
So stealth. he takes a shot at you, and he has advantage because by... Oh, let's see if he has advantage. Roll stealth. Stealth. Yeah, roll your stealth roll, because... If, if you're stealthy enough, he won't, he'll be too far from his well, buddy. So now you know that his buddy oh. has to be next oh, to you to oh, get advantage. With a d20. Yep, yep. roll a d20. Plus seven. seven 14. 14. Oh. Your stealth is good enough that when he hits you, he doesn't get advantage because he's too far away from Emerald. So now you know okay. they get advantage. They have to both be next to their target to get advantage against their target. Another thing you've learned about these reds. It's all good stuff. I'm expecting you all to think of this tactically in the fights to come. So the first one that he did uh, was a 19. So I'm afraid it hits you anyway. He didn't roll with advantage, but uh, it was enough to hit you. 19 okay. is better than your AC. So Gammy, you take five points of bludgeoning damage. Five. Subtract five hit points. I can do that. All right. Okay. Now, you do uh, you do a shot on him. So go ahead and use whatever. Now you can use your stealth to try to, to do sneak attack damage. I'll use my stealth. Okay, roll stealth. Ooh, do. oh, he's rogue. He's, he's pretty sneaky. That's, this little guy's sneaky. Is that six? Uh, is it looks like it is. Yep, so the, yeah, the period comes after yeah, it. So six. it's like a period on a sentence. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. the total? Right, so that's um, uh, 13. Right. Yeah. Thirteen. Yeah. That exceeds his passive uh, perception, so you are able to successfully hit him with advantage because okay. he can't see you. So now roll an attack against the idiot attack. with advantage. Now yes. roll two d20s and take the higher oh, of the two. Two. I only have one. Always have two dice on him. Now don't loan them to each other. Okay. Give him his own die. Or I'm, okay. tre I'm teaching you all to be okay. battle ready. Have two dice. Okay. There you yeah. go. Uh, take the twelve. <laughs> take the twelve. Yes. Oh, okay. Twelve and. Either do the math or say say the math know, to somebody. Just say, say somebody will do the math for you. If you just say plus something, they'll do the math. Isn't for it plus, plus five? five so plus okay. Five. The attack, yep. attack bonus. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. What's that? Seventeen. Um, Seventeen okay. is enough. Okay. Yeah. Roll your damage against this idiot. Good job. And because it's advantage, you have you have sneak so attack. You're rolling again. So you're doing damage now. So we do Great. damage so with your again. short sword. You do a d six. No, yep. no, no. Roll d six. D six. Yeah. Ah, so confusing. That's all right. Just comes with practice. Three? three plus, I think it's yeah, three Five. plus three. Yep, three plus three. Oh, yeah. Yep, so that's six, right? Yeah, that is six. However, you're doing a sneak attack. Anytime you hit somebody with advantage, Gammy, you get to roll an extra d6. So we're going to take that six, roll that d6 again. That's called sneak attack damage. That's why you always want to hit somebody no, 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 no. who's well, next to one of your friends, which doesn't apply, yeah. or yeah. with advantage. Yeah. Roll two or one. No, 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 no. Just, no. just, yep, just roll one. Just keep just one. one. Yeah, okay. Okay, another three. Five six, plus three. three. Five plus three. Eight. 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 Yes. Huh? Five eight. plus three. It was six. No, six plus three. No. Six plus three. No. Six plus three. Nine. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. with sneak attack, you did nine points of damage. One hit. Very good. It's Emerald's turn. And okay. again, you hit him. He's like, "Oh God, my guts!" And he like goes away. So now Emerald's standing alone. Emerald does not get advantage against you, which is a good thing. So without advantage, Emerald's going to swing at you with that mace, Gammy. Mm. Um. Stop. So it doesn't matter. He's, he's, he's going to find you eventually, so it doesn't matter. Your stealth doesn't matter now. But with a nine, you jump out of the way. He swings a nine, lower than your AC. That means your evasion. You roll out of the way. Bam, it hits the ground. Oh, come here, you little bugger. And he rolls and he thinks he's swing at you again with a five. God damn, tarnation. Like, where's that little, like, where's that little creep going? So yeah, he's, he swings, bam, swings, bam. You evade all damage. He does nothing to you. Now you get to try to sneak up behind him. So roll stealth again against Emeralds. Uh, so roll a stealth roll. Yep. Yeah, you're getting the hang of it. 16 plus 7. Somebody, as soon as somebody uh, says it, do the math. 23. 23. Okay. 23. It's much more than enough. He does not see it coming as you drive the short sword between his ribs from behind. So, okay. you're cool. going to, or try to. Now you roll with advantage. So you're going to try to attack Emerald. You're that's hidden. So that's why you're rolling two dice, because that's the that's successful one. Two, two, two dice. dice. Okay. That's right. No, no, two dice. Two, 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 oh, two of those. Yep. yep. Okay. So this is attacking with advantage because you're hidden. 18 and 7. So well, 18, just 18, when you have advantage, only mention the oh, top one. one. And then okay. to buy one. Yeah, okay. 18 and then say plus whatever your, your bonus to hit with a sword is. So say you can say 18 plus 3. Three. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. And That's 21. Somebody heard it. Good. 21 is more than enough to hit. You stab him very badly. You've caught him surprising. Now, go ahead and roll, again, your sneak attack. Roll two d6s and add three. Mm -hmm. So we'll do all your sneak attack at once. This is massive. That's yeah. six. Yes? Nine. In total. Yeah. So six nine. Plus six plus three is nine. nine. You do yeah. another nine points of damage to Emerald. That starts turning around. You've now done more damage to the Reds. You're ahead 33 by 32. Good job. Hey. Okay. 
Uh, Gammy, yeah, you, you, you took, yeah, damn, yeah. So they, they yeah, Gammy, Gammy took five damage, but otherwise <laughs> did nine and did another yeah. nine. Good job. Who's next? I'd like to have a go. Yes. Um, All right, Smarag. Okay, I would like to try cast level one command on the ally. Ah. And can I, as a bonus action, also prepare myself with shield of faith? <laughs> okay, sure. Yes, you can do both. So, Shield of Faith, what does that do? So, Shield of Faith, Shimmering Field appears and surrounds a creature of your choice, so yes. it can be me, <laughs> can be within you. range, Definitely. granting it a two bonus to AC for the duration. Okay, you have and higher that, AC with a Shimmering Field. And that Good is job. a bonus action. Yes. Now, Command, one of your best commands, like, just before, so he's reeling up to, to hit you, right? So, the idiot's about to hit you, Shmarag. Yeah. And he's going to have advantage because Emerald's next to him. But you tell Emerald, flee is a great command. Yeah, that's the one I was going to pick. Awesome. Okay, yeah. now Emerald is going to try to resist your command with a wisdom saving throw. Um, has to beat 13. Does it, does it say wisdom or does it say correct? Wisdom, yeah. 13. Ah, he resists your command. He oh. does not flee. Um, yeah. Is there something about if this, the... the, the, the um, yeah, very often if they save, they take some damage, but in this case, I don't. Doesn't, it doesn't just doesn't. They just have to do it. There was something about the next turn. I just wanted to reread that. Yeah, so it must yeah. succeed or follow the commander in its next turn, but nothing about if it fails. Yeah, That's it fails. okay. Okay, well, so this thug is going to have advantage, the red, as he swings his mace at you with your improved AC. <gasps> He rolled a 21, I swear. Oh. oh, he got past your shield. It hits your shield of faith, but it still digs through and does six bludgeoning damage against you, Shmarag. However, your shield stays up, so you still have an improved AC uh, as the next hit comes, but not before you hit him. So you now are able to take your turn against the idiot. Um, all right, well, I'm going to swing my um, Warhammer. Uh-huh. Um, ugh, seven doesn't hit, does it? Uh, do your math. Uh, the, the AC can be very low. So you either say the math or, or figure it out yourself. Well, seven. Seven plus what? When you're hitting with the when hitting with your warhammer, you always oh, add something. Fuck. Uh, eleven. Okay, eleven is enough. Okay. These guys have very low AC. He, they just have clothes on, like their armor is largely oh, fake, and they're not very high in their feet. So now you know their armor class is fairly low. Good job. Eleven is a hit. So do your damage with the warhammer. Uh, it's one d eight, one d eight, one d eight. Uh, that's a d six. Oh, it is two. That's fine. Don't worry. Uh, four plus two, six. Good, six damage. That was quick. So you do six damage to him, and again, he dips out. He's like, oh, go, oh, God, you hit, broke my head. So he's away, and Emerald is alone as Emerald swings at you. So Emerald does not have advantage as the first mace comes at you, Smarag. With a ten, you duck out of the way, not a problem. He says, ah, oh, Smarag, I'll get you this time. He swings at you from another dress like a backhand with a thirteen. No, you are able to, it clangs off your, your magical and regular armor, and you take no damage for this whole round. Now you get to take a shot at Emerald. Um, I'm gonna go with just Sacred Flame. Sacred Flame, he has to do a dexterity saving throw, yes. and I think we've already established their dexterity isn't very good. Oh, I don't think so. What is the DC? 13. Ah, oh, he doesn't sorry. make it. Sorry, yeah. when it says that, that's the number mm -hmm. here, 13. That's right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah 13. Not enough. He has nothing to that roll, by the way. So he is underneath 13. Do your damage from Sacred Flame. Uh, pff, oh, just one. one. Unlucky, but very nice and quickly roll. That's great. <sighs> no modifiers add to it? No, uh, no magic spells can't. usually don't, yeah, and yeah. the magic spells oh, generally okay. don't. Okay, it is now 40 to 38. You're ahead by two points of damage only. This last one can definitely dictate who wins the spar. Who no. has not gone yet? <laughs> the one that, that, that is notorious for rolling the low. This is your chance, Vol. So, okay. first of all, yeah. uh, are you going to buff yourself or anything before this incoming damage from the idiot? Can I use a cantrip to, um, to create a distraction? Uh, what would it be? A song, uh, yes, an illusion of the, a song coming from behind oh. the, the group, the enemy group there. It would be tough. So I, I try, this is like combat, and mm. in combat I do interpret things more strictly than usual. I don't want to do that because there are spells that naturally get to disadvantage to people. Like, they're built for disadvantage. Okay. So with that, I, I, I don't know. What yeah, I usually do is, like, forget, if you roll, yeah. roll, roll a d20. If you, get a, if you get a 19 or 20, it'll work. But it's very, very unlikely. Nope. Well, he got that out of the way. Okay. Yeah. No, that doesn't work. But he's now going to swing at you. Unless you have something else up your sleeve, he's ready to hit you. No, I have a great axe. Like, that, 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 that song didn't work, man. I'm going to I'm going to make your head ring. That's the song we're going to play. Like With an advantage. <laughs> oh, a 22 is oh. higher than your AC, I yeah. reckon. So you get bludgeon for five points. Ooh, Put that, that on the board. Bad. You now get to try to hit him. 
Okay, I will be using my great axe. Okay. To swing, and let's see. Oh, oh yes, 18 plus 5. Oh, nice. 23. 23. Very good. That hits him. Do your damage against him. Okay, a d12. I didn't actually bring out the d12, so. All right. Actually, I did not bring out the d12. Oh, okay. Uh, I do have... I yeah, so is, is that, is, do you have one left? So don't loan dice to each other. I've, got, I don't want I've, people, got, I've right. got some, I okay. just didn't bring Make sure you always, yeah, never give up your only dice. I want everybody I to have their own dice all the time. We've got a bag full of dice there. There's dice there. I've got some here, I just didn't bring them out before. Okay. Oh, all right. them away. Nice, all right. Yeah. That's it. That's the D12. There we go, yeah. go for it. Seven plus Ooh. three, ten. Ooh, ten points of damage with one chop of the axe. Ah, oh, that knocks him out. Like he is fell down. Did you choose yeah. to knock him out instead of kill him? You're supposed to be no, knock him out. Yeah. Yeah. So, still so have bam. Him. It's like, like you, you chop at him a couple times with yeah. the blade, and he bleeds very heavily, and then you just sort of backhand with the flab of the blade, and that knocks him out. He falls yeah. unconscious but stable to the ground. He's down to one damage. Minute. Zero hit points. He's down to zero. I get I get temporary hit points because. Any enemy, this is the wording of it, any oh. enemy that I reduce to zero hit points, yeah. I get uh, temporary hit points added, I think it's uh, something, um, well. level plus charisma. Yeah, so look, look like, that up in a minute, yeah. so look up the yeah. points later, but... yeah. The, the, the voice is like, oh, very well done, well, I'm really, I, I, I will tell the boss about this. I'll tell the boss's boss's boss about this. Very good, very good. All right, yes, yes, take our dark gift. And that is the temporary hit points that sort of swell over you, this weird color over your skin. Damage from Emerald, however, is going to subtract from some of those points, so we will be looking it up in a moment. Uh, yep. But the guy, of course, runs away, so Emerald does not have advantage as he swings the mace at you the first time. With a 19, he's they're rolling so 19, well. 19, he's above by two. All yeah. right, even without advantage, a very lucky roll. Five points of damage. Uh, Some of, of that would come off your temporary. So whatever uh, your temporary so points temporary is. temporary is actually three, so I yeah. only take so two. So your temporary is now gone. You take two points of damage, like insulation over it. Cool. He swings the mace again. I have no reason for this. With a 20, <laughs> yeah, I'm rolling so hot. So you do take some more damage. Seven points of damage. Oh, you're kidding me. Damage from Emerald, seven. Okay, well, let's just say you really should hit Emerald if you want to win this battle. Yeah, uh, yeah. anything that gives you advantage or a spell or anything like that, you, <laughs> I, you I, want to do damage. The only other thing I, I can do is use a cantrip, and honestly, I just will swing with it. Swing Your with axe has got a better chance of hitting, <laughs> I think, yeah. Yes, 17. Woo! Plus 5? 20. 20. 20. Good, that yeah, hits. 22. Yeah. Emerald gets hit by that same axe. Do your damage against Emerald. Oh, you're kidding me. One plus. Four. Oh, so four, your four strength. Total. Yeah. Four totals. Good thing you added that strength. That puts you over the edge. Your total is 50 to 54. You win the spar. You've done 54 points of damage to the Reds. They did only 50 to you. Good job. That was close. Oh, Woo, that was close. These ones out and take these ones. <laughs> Good job. All right. So as that happens, yeah, they... Uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they all, they're like, all right, all right, kid, fair enough. And they're like, yeah, well, still, you y'all suck. I, I rule, I rule. I was better than all y'all. He's like talking to all the other reds, like, you sucked and you sucked and you fell down. Like that one, that, that unconscious one, that one just better stay there. Like just put him underneath the bunk. Like just, just put, put like shit in his mouth, man. He went down. So he's just being a real dominant jerk to all the guys around him. But it's like, all right, all right, look, That's hey. Fantastic. All right, we're, we're, we're willing to, like, uh, maybe you maybe actually got a point here. Maybe you are able to take over the shrine and stuff. Like, he, he sort of lowers his voice. He looks over at the little red mirror frame. Maybe, maybe you are able to. I mean, you know, they, they just think we're sparring, so they're not paying attention. But you, do, do you want to, like, you want to, like, kill off? Do you, like, do you want to, I guess you want to become, I mean, maybe you can become my boss. Do you, maybe, maybe, maybe become all our bosses. Do you want to, are you, do you want to kill off Ziggy? Is that, is that what you're here for? Let's say no, because these guys will try to kill us. <laughs> well, they seem open to it, so they're all talking about themselves. Their attitude seems to have changed. Well, wait, wait which part are they open to? Is killing evolving. us or just us mm. killing Ziggy? Yeah. Okay. I think there's a de definite distinction between the two areas. Emerald AK says, <laughs> all right, well, so I look out. I, I, I got I to gotta report back, but, you know, y'all got to convince the, these guys, right? I just got here, so whatever you convince, you got to convince these guys. Uh, but uh, I guess, you know... I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just don't know. He he goes up to the uh, to the red mirror fragment, the, the door. All the other reds form a phalanx, so you can't follow him. So you see Emerald go up to the iron door. The iron door, if the iron door is like here, 
that on the sort of 90 degree wall, there's a red mirror fragment set into the wall. It's all cave walls with cracks and stuff all around it, like all those cracked walls. But set in, it's almost like it's kind of melted into the wall. It's, it seems like that part of the wall is almost like a texture like putty and it's sunken in, so it can't be taken off apparently. And he goes up to the door, he glances at the red mirror fragment, and he pulls a handle on the door. It's just a big square iron handle, it's just a single hinge, and he holds it up. And he hears ding, 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 from deep inside, way beyond the door, is this dinging sound, like a clanging bell. But he looks completely normal, so he's waiting. And after a while, you sort of hear footsteps and noises coming from that red mirror fragment. And you, you hear a voice, like, Emerald, my boy! Have you been implanted? He's like, yeah, yeah, boss, look, that's, I, I got it, it's good. And he's still holding it, like, ding, ding. He's like, all right, I'll, um, all right, can you come on in, but, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're training, so, so, so don't bother us. You know, let yourself in. And you hear footsteps going away. Well, but, good, all right, Gimbal, you've got a lot of training to do. Come, come meet us. And it's like, all right, all right, good. It's ding, 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 ding. After a while, the door goes pop. It's like, it's just now the handle goes up all the way and the alarm stops. He opens the iron door, yeah, shuts, it, shuts it behind him. Did you, you just see this break long hallway? The alarm, though? <laughs> the no, it's just like he's holding it. It's like he's holding it up. He tells muscles to tensing, and then after about a minute, it just goes click, and, and the so handle goes up. Is it like when someone way. has pressed the release, and so the, the you know, Not sure. like yeah. you know when you go, you open, try to open mm -hmm. a locked gate and you know you can turn it slightly it's a bit of give but it doesn't actually release until someone actually on the other side maybe so yeah that's all that you know is that, that after about a minute of the bell ringing it just popped up okay so as you walk through you hear his voice like hey y'all check your major grains bro you hear like this another door slam from back there all right so emerald's gone so actually, that so Emerald actually saying that was a little bit out of place. So it wasn't Emerald that sort of said once Emerald's gone, the, the, all the other idiots they're all much weaker than you. Like they can see from the spar, they're like, uh, "Hey, you're like, uh, like, like, like we've been like talking to the other guys. Like we got kind of like a bad feeling about all this. Like you all, like, like you all did really well. Like are you, like we just got to feel like you're here to like take over shit. You know, and, like our job sucks." Balasar though, the one with the guitar, that says, "No, I do not. I don't want to hear any such." Such dispersions on our glorious leader Ziggy. Oh, fuck off, Balasar. No, I've, I've, brothers, let us make an argument for why Ziggy is so great. And some of the other bros are like, yeah, Balasar is right. Yeah, we shouldn't listen to these guys. We shouldn't let them through at all. So you see there's a split in the red idiots. They're arguing amongst themselves about whether you're strong enough to take over and maybe you can make the job better for them. Some of them think that Ziggy is awesome or at least getting promoted is awesome and they are going to need to be convinced. So... Our next act is going to be that. But first, XP. You all get wow. 25 XP for that little fight that you were in. You also can uh, have a short rest if you want to. If you lost so much that you want to spend some of your precious hit dice oh, to get hit points back before, before you go to the next thing, you are free to. Short yeah. rest also, you could use your second wind. You fighters know that you can use second wind. That's also mm -hmm. something that you might be useful. Spells can be cast, such like that. I thought I'm going to do it 25. 25 XP. Five, yeah. five, seven, so you're saying that three. we can use it and then we get it, get it back because of the short rest? Well, the way uh, second wind goes, if you haven't used your second wind yet all day, which you mm -hmm. haven't, you yeah. can use your second wind and then you know at the end of the short rest you'll be able to six, use it again. So yep. it recharges. That's okay. So yeah. it's a great way for fighters Sorry. to fix themselves Four up. Four plus six. And Thank you. And you we'll dice. back up to D10. D10. Monday, yeah, well, yeah. good. You, you, you hit dice. Everybody's rest. learning short you, rest. You it's very good. Rest. 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 Add your constitution bonus yeah. when you roll your hit die. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. subtract oh, sorry. your hit dice. Short rest. Yeah, you can do short rest if yeah. you want. Cool. Uh, if you don't think it's a waste, the only reason not to do short rest is if you're only down like a couple hit points, it might be a quote waste of your, your hit die. <gasps> short rest, arcane yeah. recovery. I got them, uh, yes, yes, you can use arcane recovery. Yeah. Yeah. If I do short rest, I can use just one. I don't have to use all my die at That's once. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and you roll them one at a time. You can decide as you go. You roll one, decide when you roll another. Yeah, yep. 18. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 27, 21 out of 27. Four. Mm. So, yeah. This is your last chance for a short rest before some next things happen. Well, so, you're well, doing I it or not? I need it. <laughs> okay. Um, you can't go above your max, can you? No. God damn yeah, it. That's what I mean by the waste. So, so it, could, it could be uh, you're taking a bit of a gamble, but yeah, it's sometimes it's still smart to do. Look, I only went, like, I've, I've you're made a short rest. rest. How do I short rest? Uh, so, uh, you've okay. lost five hit points. Mm. Which means that, yeah, it's, it's that, probably pretty good reasonable. Good you would roll a d8. Yeah. 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 Add your yeah. constitution yeah. bonus. Yeah. A d8 plus so one. So no, that yeah. is yeah. really yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a d10. Can somebody hand him a d8, please, from the back? Yeah. 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 Fresh d8. That's a d12. D12. There you go. So roll your d8. Add your constitution bonus. 
does it work for your Good, yeah. four. Yeah. Right, so it was plus your constitution bonus. Good, so you're so nearly at like the full. So now your hit points are good. Yeah, see, mine. And then subtract well, it's your D8. So subtract your D8 from two down to one. It's gone too hard. It's not the right thickness. Anyway, I'm back up to full health. Yeah, all right. I'm definitely not. One point below. Yes. Okay, okay. I was going to say, do I need to come over and heal you? Because I'm Shmarag is very tempted oh, to leave you to your own... I'm good. <laughs> ...wallow in your own mess. This is the one I've got the dark ones. Ah, you're still a team. So you're still going to rise and fall together. <laughs> got to do... Got to be a team. I'm good. I'm so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so good. I'm so good. Also, uh, obviously part of this ritual is that you are given an award. So each of you get some gold beads. Oh, so uh, just write down gold yeah, beads from it. idiots. <laughs> and write one GP. Just to say there's some number of beads oh, that say uh, that says one GP. So it's a little a little you know, right. picture is one big bead or five little beads doesn't really matter. So right. you get some gold beads. These are perfectly smooth. Heavy gold. I'm running your place. I'm going to add it to the things. existing ones I still have. Make a big sure. Yeah, you must keep a separate packet because you might spend them at different times, but that's fine. They, 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 they came from a different source. Okay. Even though know, they look the same as the ones you have, yeah, it's always good to keep track of the proper ones. You never know if things are as they seem. So do write down as a separate line the gold beads from the so new set. This is one GP. No, uh, well, Remember, the one GP just means that you know you can sell them for one GP. Maybe sell them more if you've got a good story. That's why you want to keep track of them separately. Can't have your I got those off some idiots for winning a spar. Okay. Gold idiots. So, we're going to move on to the next act. Yes. This is uh, an RP battle. Now, I'm going to use the same mechanic that you did with the kobolds all that time ago. You have a jury, which is the reds. You have somebody on the other side, which is Balasar, who thinks that Ziggy's awesome and things just stay the same and they shouldn't let you through. You want to argue, like, no, we're going to take everything over, and if you, if you want us to like us, you're going to let us get through that door. Figure out how to get to that door. You're going to leave us alone. So you're trying to argue with, uh, with these idiots. So again, you get to resolve this uh, with your soft skills without direct combat. So if you're a lover and not a fighter, or if you're just a good talker, this is a good chance to shine. But remember, any skill can be used. You can use your skills very creatively. No matter what you're good at, you'll find a way to contribute. Just keep in mind a few things that might steer your argument. You see they're doing shitty work. They're processing shard ore. They're talking shit about their bosses, just like anybody working will do so. You also know they're pretty intimidated. The fact that, that you've shown physical strength uh, to them probably matters. You might want to impress them or intimidate them or get them to back down. If you do well enough, they might even become useful like allies or useful idiots are always good to have around. They could become followers or allies in the future if you do a very good job here. But you're basically just trying to convince them. So. Uh, they, you want them to not oppose you as they just let you through. Just look the other way while we go through that door and don't tell your bosses we're coming because you still want to have the element of surprise. All this is about, you, you don't want to alert the whole building. You want to just get through one at a time. So Emerald doesn't know you're coming. So Emerald didn't never said what he did. He's just like, yeah, cool, I'm going to go through the door. He has no idea that the other idiots are sort of conniving with you. So you do think that you, if you can only get in there without raising an alarm of some sort, if you just let, let these idiots let you alone so you can figure out how to operate this door and mirror combination properly, then you have a good chance of surprising whoever's in that next room. So Balasar is on your other side. I'm not going to over-explain the rules because hopefully you remember how it goes, so I'll just kind of jump ahead to the summary of what it goes. So... Here's what Balasar is saying. Here's his stance that you want to change. Basically saying, we are working for Ziggy. The shrine of evil chaos is a path to awesome. He's always posing a path to awesome power. And we should stay loyal to Ziggy. Ziggy and our bosses. He's sort of playing the guitar. He told us to stop the intruders from coming through to our side. If these newbies want to join, they can crack ore until they find a shard just like we did. I won't be convinced. So he's, he's, he's uh, uh, implacable. So if, he, right if, if we keep the status quo, if they keep, and again, some of them are, are agreeing with him. So they won't let you through, they won't let you mess with the defenses, they won't even let you near the door, and if you do, they'll probably feel obligated to start fighting you and call in their, their bosses and your asses might get kicked. Probably will get kicked if the whole building is called on you. Now, you get to choose what do you want their stance to become. Like, what's your goal? You want Balasar to back down and believe something different. I have a suggestion for what that is, but you can change this. Here, here's, here's the most basic idea. It would be great if Balasar instead said something like this. You know, we should abandon Ziggy. We should abandon this dumb shrine of evil chaos thing. Because that way we'll avoid the destruction that these mighty heroes are about to bring. Like, we don't want to be here when shit goes down. We should leave and let them through. Let's let them intrude deeper into that side, and then we'll just hope these heroes beat Ziggy so that we won't get our asses kicked later on. Let's just look the other way and let them through. We're going to bet on these heroes. 
And maybe they'll give us a new purpose in life is something that they're talking about. Like maybe there's something else that we can do. Ah, maybe they'll become followers of yours is your realization. If they take that stance, if you succeed, they won't stop you going to the door, messing with it, experimenting with it. They won't necessarily rally and fight for you, but they're willing to look the other way as you try to get through that door without raising the alarm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can change that stance if you want, but that's a good generic thing you might want out of it. But you can flavor this or change it right now if uh, as a group you agree you want them to believe something different. You want to change their attitude in a different way. I'd like a follow-up if we can get a follow-up. <laughs> The surfer bro would be nice to have around. <laughs> they're, they're legend bros. They're not surfer yeah. bros. Oh. Um, Teach the surf. Yeah. Everybody I, okay with that? I, I, yeah. I, I did and we say that things will be better. We'll make things better. We yeah. so can convince them that sex. things will be better. So part of your argument in this against the jury is like, you've got better options. So mm. things will be better if Ziggy's not in charge, but yeah. we are. Yeah, either you're stands? doomed if you stay as you are, so or or yeah, either things will be shit if you stay, or things will be better if you change. Either yeah. argument will Probably work. give them more autonomy. I don't really want to rule them or anything. Tell them to start their own gym mm -hmm. away right. from here. Like... Okay. There are yeah. more freedom. Yeah, and these are all arguments you can make. So it sounds like you're all leaning towards that stance. Like, yeah, just yeah. abandon the shrine of evil chaos, and you know, maybe, maybe, you maybe we'll teach you a new way to, to make a living. I think there is one thing that our missing party member has would, would probably say here, and I think we all need to realize that the Church of He-Man. <laughs> <laughs> think about the muscles. Think about every, yeah. Think about the people. Well, that's a lie. The church of it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. let's get Angle stuck in. Was that? Yeah. So they can Hello. Be. Have you heard the good part? Yes. <laughs> So, the, yes. the Church of Hemo. Hemo would be very helpful here. Yeah, we just steer them in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're close to it already. So, let, let, me, let me lay out the rest of the plan here. So, the jury are the red idiots. Yeah. Some of them are on Balasar's side and some are on your side already. And a lot of them are neutral. Um, here are some points that Balasar and his idiots are saying. So, here are things that uh, he's saying that you can decide to tear down these points. This is how he's keeping their loyalty. Right, so this is, this is Balasar. Is saying three things. One is strict hierarchy. Hierarchy in the red system is the best way to get what we want. Humans should be ruling everybody, especially the elves. And dwarves are okay too. And you're, you're not so bad. Souls, souls that express as masculine and strong should be in charge. The masculine soul should dominate all else. Souls that express as feminine are weak. They should be dominated and put into their place. Now, this belief, as you know, is bizarre to you. It's like people today saying right-handed people should rule over left-handed people. It's like, you, you've probably never heard this before. It's a very weird, exotic, fringy thing to say. Like, what? Mas what's, what why are they so obsessed with masculine and feminine? In this world, you, you can express yourself. Your body can actually change to express masculine or feminine qualities. You know, it's just a matter of what your soul wants to express or what you choose to be. So it's just a completely bizarre set of beliefs. But this is what he's advocating. So his first one is... Hierarchy leads to success. Get what you want by respecting hierarchy and putting everything in its place with those ideals. Point number two. We have divine power on our side. He sort of points, but he sort of winks. He sort of like, he sort of, he sort of, he, sort of, he points, and then he winks sort of points down at the same time. Powerful and important deities, certain deities, <laughs> want us to succeed, and they're on our side. Mm -hmm. So, we have divine power on our side. Deities that want us to succeed in our mission. Third, and most important, Ziggy shreds on guitar better than anyone in the world. We are the best fans of the most awesomest heavy metal band if we stick with Ziggy. I would challenge any of you to a shred off. Dum, 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 dum. He plays his guitar. So. I'm um, this ready. <laughs> shred off. No, 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 no back walks. No, 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 no fast talk. No, 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 no. So. Best guitar shredder. Oh. Hmm. So these are all things that you can challenge this supremacy with any of your skills. These are things that you can use your skills to tear down and they will try to boost up. Our heroes, again, you can come up with your own points. Let me suggest a few. 
After each one, if you say, hey, I would never want us to say that, I'll, I'll, I'll say, ask people like, hold up your hand if you say, I would never want to say that because it'll go off the board. These are things that you'll try, to, you'll try out these arguments at some point, which they might try to tear down. Say one. You can say there are other adventures that you can go on out there in the world. There's other things to do. You know, those adventures can give you the power and riches that are so important to you, and you can do whatever you want. So just a basic argument about go on a world trip. Go on Eat other groupies. Yeah, go on other adventures. Learn how to play first. Mm. <laughs> That's not necessarily need to in the world. In order. <laughs> uh, hold up your hand to say like I would never say that. If everybody holds up their hand, I'll erase it. Seems usual. Another point that you could make. Ziggy and the Reds are just mm -hmm. using mm -hmm. you. <laughs> you are just fodder for their plans. You're cannon fodder. You're disposable if you don't fit those plans. So you could argue Ziggy and Reds and are using you. Hold up your hand if you say, like, no, I, I, I would never say that. I don't think any of us should say that. Okay. I might have a different um, different point in, in this one, but I want to see the third one. Yeah, you, you don't have to stick exactly these points yeah. to your inspiration. You can stray outside yeah. these points. But I just want to make sure if everybody says, no, none of us would ever say that, I want to take it off the board because I don't want okay. you to feel accountable for, for saying something you didn't say. Third one, the silver faction. Oh, you, know, this, yeah, you could gesture to them, basically. There's another faction, the Silver Faction, and we know about them. They're going to cancel out your red power. All these power for the reds, you've got a huge opposing situation with the Silvers. And the Silvers are using these ripe shards in ways that are powerful and dangerous. You don't know what you're up against. They have backers that are rich and powerful, and they have a huge plan. So to frighten them, so like you think that you've got this path to power, but we know there's a whole group that is getting ready to take you down. So you're going to be up against them and us. So, hold up your hand if you think we should never say that to them about the silver. And you can explain why. I don't feel like we should say that about the silvers because A, it's a bluff, and B, um, I don't want to. True. Yeah. I don't want to um, throw nightmare shit at the silvers, and the silvers right. go, "Who told you that shit?" And mm. it comes back to us. Well, um, to count that point. If we can get the red faction to go after the silver faction, mm -hmm. oh. then and that have them turn on the each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. I still feel like we oh, could we could make a deal with the silvers in a, in a way. Yeah, but the silvers, while while they handling their own so stuff. So on camera, we did a quick combat. That's up, that that's that screen there is for quick okay. combat. Oh. Sorry, don't interrupt you. That's that's the. Hashtag you can put if you want to see yep. combat. While they're well, while role playing the silvers are keeping to themselves, they're doing everything, mm -hmm. you know, they're not hurting anyone else intentionally mm -hmm. because of the use of the shards, mm -hmm. they're ripping holes in reality mm -hmm. and they're allowing demons. And but to say they've got a plan is a bit. They don't have a plan. Yeah, they, they I don't have an attention. They, yeah. they don't have a plan, but I'm just I saying we can actually have, have these two factions yeah. go against each other so we can yeah, actually go through. I can see what you're saying, but I feel like I feel like it, it's like a, like, I don't know, it's like putting your hand in a bag full of snakes and you... Well, I'm actually seeing a way, an option that we possibly can go after this point and a couple of the other ones, getting rid of this one as well. Okay. Yeah, we'll take the points one at a time. And so all you need to do right now is, just, is it okay for this point to be on the board, or do it's, you all think that nobody says it? If, if anybody here thinks this is useful to say, you don't have to roll for it. Just, you just want it to be kind of be in the air, because that means that they can tear it down. They can, they can weaken your argument by tearing down this argument. I don't think I would go for it, but if anyone else wants to, it's fine yeah. by me. Okay. Okay. Again, you can improvise around this when you do things. If it's not on the board, that's fine. But each of these things are things that if the one thing that these battles do is they change the attitude of the Reds, not only might win them over, but what you get them to believe, the things that you choose and roll well on, will really change their attitude. Just like the Kobolds got changed a lot by the tactics that you used, the arguments you made, and, and the roles that you had, the same will happen here. Okay, so I've done that. We have a few beads, right? So we have... So, we have a couple jurors, at least, are on each of the sides. You've got a lot of jurors that are neutral and up for grabs. However, the fact that you won that spar battle, 
you've already got an extra one on your side. So you're already winning. What you need is more points. By the time you're done, you want more beads here than over here. Let me show that camera to people out there. Shred off. Shred yeah. Yes. Shred Let me do it together. Okay. So you want more beads on that side than the other. You can do that because I've got a different. Uh, this is the uh, score. Some of these as well. We'll, we'll see. Here. So the mechanics here, um, hopefully you're familiar, so I won't go too deep into it. You pick a skill. You can think of a world fact as usual. You can get a plus one on your roll if you cite a world fact that sort of fits or something about your character is written on your character sheet. You know, one thing is all that's necessary. Also, but as you do it, I want to hear a line. Like if you say in character a line or, or say what would your character literally say, that can also add maybe another point. So like I have some more points to give out here. Right? So I'll represent these points. I'll represent the jurors by, by, by chips. I'm tired of losing, my, losing my, my, my tracking here. So the line that you say, the world fact that you have, also can be a point. And also just, you know, really, even if it's not the greatest skill, like it's not your best skill, but you have a really clever reason and, what, and way to use it, that will sometimes, that will often give you a point as well. Okay. Give me my beads back. <laughs> give me my precious beads back. Okay. So, who uh, wants to go first? I have an idea. I don't know how well it's going to work, so let's go go first so I can get it over and done with. Okay. Um, I want to counter their claim that their divine power comes from deities. Good. With Bear my down. religion skill. Very good. And by also trying to convince them that you can actually come across real <laughs> deities who do good things for you and get make you powerful and you, when you go on, you know, go on other adventures out in the world, okay. you'll actually encounter real, yeah, real actually, deities. Can you mention something you've heard about the world about a deity that's actually in the world that might be a way to counter that power? Can you cite something I've mentioned? Ah, uh, yes. Ogram. Ogma. 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 Okay. Um, Maybe I'm adding a point for that. And you said you wanted a clever line? Yes. I, Give I, me a line. I can't remember the quote very well, but where are your false gods now? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, okay. I was going to say, I don't, you know what I'm trying to reference. Very good. I'm giving you two <laughs> extra points to so do a religion roll okay. and add two. The number that you have to get for all of these is a 14. So the DC for both sides is a 14. Okay. Uh, six. Oh, seven, eight. Seven, eight. Oh, well. So you try a religious argument, but it just goes unlucky. You know, a, a low die roll doesn't mean you're not good at religion. It just means that you know, as you pick it, like, oh, like, Ogmar's, like, they hadn't heard of Ogmar's, like, yeah. it just sounds like a fucking made-up god just by bad luck, you know, or they, it's like, oh, you know, I saw, I saw a blog post, you know, about okay. Ogmar, and they basically go off this long rant, and they sort of fill up the air with this conspiracy theory about yeah. Ogmar is actually part of a worldwide conspiracy to control the flow of money or something. They get completely distracted, so through bad luck, your argument doesn't go ahead. I know what I mean. So I do not add any points to there. No, I knew what it was Balasar yeah. is now going to counter with one of his things. Things. So he's talking about the strict hierarchy, right? Hierarchy in the red system. So he brings out his history. He says, like, there are so many examples of this ethos. This ethos of domination is the best kind of government. It leads to all kinds of successful things throughout history. But you realize that as he tries to, he has very few historical examples of absolute hierarchy lasting. Like, you know, the, the, the empires that last a thousand years are often ruled by, uh, but he's trying to cite them. He's being very vague. So can every I, time that he rolls, he's, he's, every time he rolls, he's got just a general plus three for his general skills. But I'm going to sometimes add one, two, or three based on kind of how well prepared he is. I'm going to add nothing to this roll, right? He has got no good historical things. He's waffling a lot and making up a lot of shit, but he's not as convincing as he could be because he doesn't really have a lot of historical historical examples of this ethos leading to a successful society. So he's going to do this plus two. So all his roles have at least a, a plus, a, a, sorry, a three. That's what that was for you. So he has just a plain plus three to try to make a 14. <gasps> oh, oh my God. 20. All right. Who needs facts? Fake news. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I he uses the tested. best fake news. <laughs> Oh, this works very well. They lap it up. He has absolutely no facts on his side, but with a whole array of this fake news shit, they are completely, you know, again, un luckily for him, he's prepared them for this argument. And they're all like, oh, yeah, they all start, like, you know, commenting on each other's stories. Okay. Yeah, to Too it. bad for you. He gets a point on his side. So now it's tied three to three. Who's next? I need someone with Snopes.com. Okay. <laughs> yeah, magical Snopes. Uh, mm -hmm. Um... 
I, um, Gammy tells the the um, the are these the idiots, which are Belsar's idiots. Yeah. That um, though Belsar is the best guitar shredder that you've yes, ever seen. Yes. Yes. If you go off, if you let us become battle the other guys in the other room and you yeah. become the boss, we become the bosses. Yeah. We can take over and we can grab all of their guitars. Yeah. And you can go off on adventures and learn guitar while you're having your <laughs> campfire stories. Sure. And you can become guitar playing campfire storytelling. Um, campfire music's inferior. Know. I challenge yeah. you to a shred off. Are you going to use your performance skill? I have a performance You skill. sure do. You do. I have a plus five. You got a plus five in performance. <laughs> can, I just, can I help him out with one Can thing? we help? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to keep this rolling in. Yeah, but uh, but no, if, no, if it's a brilliant no. idea, then, then I'll pick up on What is it? One, I, one idea at most. You've got loot or you've got something to work with? I've Some got... musical instruments? Uh, um, <laughs> I've got candles. <laughs> you can borrow his guitar, so you know you know how to play guitar well enough. You, yeah. he'll, he'll, okay. It's the shred off. It's like he gets to use his guitar. Throw fair, fair. You get to use like my awesome you, guitar. You've got, you've got, uh, you've got perception. Uh, you've uh, got five. Got perception. Uh, performance. performance. Yes. Okay. I use my minor illusion. I'm going to make it work at one point. Um, on there to play the song. To, to play the fastest shred he can. Ah, uh, I sort of boost a little guitar. bit? Okay, so I do. Like, it's just a cantrip. Yeah. Okay, okay. So maybe I'm adding a point for that. So you're going to have a okay. plus five. Oh, maybe man. I'm adding a bead because that works. Do you have a oh, line that you say as you play? Or do you, do you have... So. What's something that you literally say as Gammy? That what might give you an extra point. Gammy. Um, I'm sorry. Cool. <laughs> the sky is dark and the... Yeah, go, go. And the, go um, go, go. the stars you. are bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we can have a great time in the... Blue yonder. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 like, like, so you, so your shred up was like instead of like really shredding, mm. you might pick up on this, and instead, like, he's doing like a campfire song, which is a totally different thing. If you roll really well, you might convert these guys to love campfire songs. You roll well enough. So, are you gonna like augment Come that back, with yeah. your cantrip to sort of you know have some nice sort of backing sounds yeah. and things to evoke yep. the campfire? Yes. Okay. Then I'll give you. All right. <laughs> Very good. I'm giving you a plus two on this. We're so roll you something. roll a d20. This one. You're gonna do a plus five. You have an extra two because of uh, the, 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 the the campfire idea, and then your line is a good one. Ten. Nice. Plus Seventeen. Five. Seven plus five is plus thing. Yes. Yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen. All right. That's good enough. So you play very convincing. Oh, this is great. Yeah. So one with campfire music. Like, at first you're like, oh, man, that doesn't sound like heavy metal at all. But it's, it's kind of beautiful in a way. It's like, but you know, I was, I, I'm not crying. It's just, it's just like that smoke from that that campfire that suddenly appeared. This is like, this is the smoke in my eyes. Like, I miss mom, but you know, it's all right. It's so like they definitely are being affected by your your sentimental campfire song, and you've softened them a bit. All right, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm feeling things I've never felt before, and you have got another point. So you're ahead. Good job. Devil goes down to Georgia in my head right now, just letting you know. Because that's kind of really sick of guitar, me. so it's like, it's that sort of kind of country, kind of not. Trust me, if this didn't work, I was going to play that in the, behind the violinist. Just All right. So here we go. Uh, he's heard you make the points, and you know, you've been talking about other adventures and go out in the wide world. And he's like, the wild world is very dangerous. A hierarchy will protect you. The reds will protect you. These people are just wandering around the world. They've been up with the elves. They've been in various places. I even heard a, I even heard a story, and tell me if it's true. One of you actually died at one point. Is it true that any of you in this table have ever been to zero hit points? Multiple times. This one has gone down like a dead puppy several times. But is he's that the still kind of, here. <laughs> <Keep> <laughs> but is that the kind of adventure that you want? No, you'll be safe amongst your brothers. So he's trying to tear down this idea that other adventures are better than staying in the Red Hierarchy. Uh, and because you died, I say that he's got a three, and he's got another two on top of that. So he's got a good story about this, because I mean, you've died more than once, haven't you? Fake news. <laughs> He's gonna be the next one because he died a couple don't, times. Don't like, say fake news. Look, he's look at the scars. Do you, are you sure that you want to go down, you know, be be helped by elves and stuff? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, El you were just with an elf that was descended <laughs> up the gate. Change the subject. All right, so he's gonna have a three plus this three because he's got a good point. Try to make a fourteen. Oh no, seven plus 13. Two. thirteen. Not enough. Mm. 
oh, he tries his best. He tries to remember the details, but it turns out that he's taken so much shit that a lot of the rumors about your death are completely opposite each other. So he just unluckily has pulled some real facts, but a bunch of other fake facts. And it was like, but didn't you just say like this? Like, how could he have died this way if you actually died this other way? I just played the song Skrillex back from the dead tonight. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Fails at that. Can I just just ask, does Balthazar have so like a sweeping head do and really, really orange skin? Uh, Thank you. I don't think so. There's there's another character in my world that will that is the exact one that you're looking for. But it's not okay. Balasar. Okay, good job. You're still ahead. Who's next? Uh, I like to take a shot at divine power. Okay, tear down the divine power thing. Sure. Because I'm saying that? that you're not really red. You're just a bad copy of a copy. Ooh. And I show as proof. I show the mummified hand. As their hand signals. Yeah, yeah. And also, you're not actually in communication with the devil. I am. And I'm telling you that you're not actually. You're just a bad copy of a bad copy. Oh, you've got a good line. You've got good world things. And what skill are you using? I'm using history. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, Plus three. Okay, I'm going to give you a plus three. That is an awesome combination of line. And you've got the artifacts and the point to make it. So history is a plus three. This is a plus three. Trying to make a 14. Go for it. Oh, unlucky. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Not enough. It could have been. How does the bad luck manifest? I think when you pull out that hand, like the big thing, like your big finish was the hand. What's happened to the hand? The hand, the the hand is rotted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The, you know, bad dice mean bad luck. Good skills, good idea, but just your community crusade, you pull it out of the hand, just sort of sloughs off and just all sort of nasty. Because it, like, it, was, it was a freezing cold room, that's what was preserving it. You haven't really thought of how to preserve no, it. No. That was been like out amongst the bugs and the whales and the little humidity. It's just completely just false. Yeah. <laughs> You're still allowed to have that hand. It's still got a scrap, so I'm not going to take the it's hand like away from you, but remember now, it's, it's, it's a really it's disgusting it's, hand. It's you do not insulting. score a point on that. Okay. All right. Okay. I think we know who has the real divine power. Twice they have tried to prove that they have some so-called divine power on their side, and this is go- this has been proven false. I shall prove to you with certain things I think you understand about certain deities that live perhaps underground. Huh? Perhaps they like flames. Perhaps they are. Um, some deities have have pointy things on their heads. Let's just say that much, huh? Maybe they have. They might have a pointy tail. You know what I'm talking about. Don't say it out loud. But remember, you have seen, you have heard our secret rituals. You have seen the secret drawings. You know who is behind our power. Do not say it. But we have certain people that are behind us. And who they are. (laughs) Scorpions? Not scorpions. I would be doing this if I was a scorpion. Have you ever seen a scorpion? Really? So you think it's a religion? (laughs) We don't know what the scorpions look like in this world. <laughs> I was going to give him a plus two, but your scorpion thing threw him off. So I'm going to give him only a plus one. Thank you very much. So we've got a three plus one on a religion <laughs> check. Eight plus four. Twelve. Twelve. Not enough. Oh, yeah, just as <laughs> asked, they're all sort of looking scared. And then you do like the scorpions thing and like a bunch of the red guys laugh. <laughs> You know, some of them are still oh, like, okay. they're, they're like, they're like, they get out marshmallows, you know, they're, they're, they've been there in a campfire mood, it's like, oh, scorpions, it's funny. Hey, you should write a song, you should write a song about scorpions, hey? <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're totally distracted. <laughs> and he does not make a point. Uh, how many times do we, we have one person who's not gone? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, okay. Same okay, us. yeah, my friend <laughs> added to yours. Uh, oh, 22. Uh, no, no, so yeah, everybody gets to go. Yeah. Everybody gets to go. Yeah, because yeah, it's like, you were just... There, yeah, I just helped out. The I, yeah. want to, uh, I want to challenge the hier- hierarchy um, and link it up with this um, this part. Hey, this. Basically, I've got, I'm using yeah. persuasion plus four. Cool. Um, um, my speech to them is that your history is sort of littered with tyrants and victims, and who exactly are you? Ooh, that's a very yeah. stern look. Yeah. Who, who are you? You are, you are eventually you may be you may be a tyrant at one stage, but you'll eventually end up as a victim. Ooh. The cycle keeps on changing. Nothing ah. ever. You might be in power now, but it won't last. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. I like that. You're 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 in a cycle where you are all being used and uh, churned out, churned out, and uh, someone will be in power for a uh, time, and then that'll be gone. So, okay. Uh, 
That's Very good. That's your entire history, and you're basing your whole beliefs on this. Okay, I'm going to give you a plus two. That was a great line. That definitely gets that. So you got a plus two on this roll. Okay. And as you, as when you argue with these res, you'll accumulate real world stories of what's happened in this world and, and keep building up examples because it's definitely a good argument. As, as you keep citing real examples of examples of this, ty this, this tyranny not working out, build up mm -hmm. an inventory of that. It's a very good argument to make. You'll get even more pluses. So roll. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, 20. That works anyway. Yeah. You've got a plus anyway. Yeah. yeah. But no, if you beat it by five, you get the extra reward. So what's the total? Uh, 20. 20. 20. 20, you beat it by five. Oh. Excellent. Is that persuasion? Persuasion plus four. Four? four plus and two. Yeah, so I already yeah, had six yeah. in my head. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so it, because it's right next to me, I'm like. Strict hierarchy. Okay. <laughs> by five, shooting. Good, good job. <laughs> so. That works extremely well. These are the kind of things that tilt them really even more. Like, they really have doubt about the success of hierarchy. Like, you, unlike uh, Balasar, are able to pull out some real backed up truths that all sort of hook up with each other about the terrible history of this kind of, you know, totalitarian system breaking down and turning supporters into victims. And they get really scared. Some of them, as it is, I say, like, ah, so, well, uh, you know, I think you've like disproven like absolutely everything in this book, but it's like a really rare book that my grandpa gave to me. But like, I realize this whole thing's bullshit. But if you sell it to the right person, like, people will buy this shit. And he hands you a very well bound, very old, ancient book. Now it's just a book, but it's, you, you can sell you can sell it for a gold piece probably. Just the fact that it's an old book, you sell for a gold piece. But if you find the right the right tinfoil hat. That, that wants to buy this sort of thing. This is basically just a bunch of like conspiracy theories, but it's really, really hundreds of years old. So write down conspiracy book from Red Idiot. Right. <laughs> One GP. No, no, two GP. Two GP. Isn't the Red Dude Bros? Sorry, two books. So, so books times two. Each one is worth one GP. Okay. Okay. Would, a, would a collector of such things be interested in, in, in it? Yes, exactly. Like, I'm sure there are nobles in the world who'd like to have a hold of, um, you know, rarities and antiquities. All right. The truth. Mm -hmm. All right. I have heard that you think that, you know, that, that, that Ziggy and the Reds are using us. Ziggy is glorious, glorious, glorious leader. Rally to the cause. You're downtrodden. Do not listen to these people. It'll be good for us to be useful to enforce order. We must stop the demon threats. And he glares over at the silvers. Yes, I said demon threats. And all the silvers like, oh, fuck you. And all that. So he is trying to... scorpions again. <laughs> so, so he's trying to use his persuade to rally the jury to the red cause. Oh, by the way... I was going to say, did we not get it? No, no, you did get an extra points. You are beating there. Sorry about I that. I wasn't sure if this was then Belsar doing an immediate... No, no, I'm just rolling. Good job. Job. Yeah, so you got one point and you got that reward. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to do his persuasion. Uh, this is just average. He's, he's got another plus two himself. Like, he's fairly persuasive. You know, he's charismatic. He, he's been there for a while. So he's got a plus five. Thirteen. Ah, oh, just short again! He's ha having a hard time holding on to their attention with all the stuff that you've done. It's like they're doing more time arguing with each other, and they're not listening to him. He's losing his grip, and so he does not add to his points. We have one more over here to do. Uh, yeah, me. Okay. Do it, nice boy. <laughs> now, so even though you're winning, mm -hmm. if you beat by a good amount, right? So if you, if you overkill, then you get bigger, you tilt them even more. So more points is always good. Followers. Uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. It makes a difference. Okay. Followers. Oh, this is going to be okay. I lean against my great axe, mm -hmm. putting the axe head into the ground. So leaning on it and just say, so. You guys don't want us, don't want anyone to go out anywhere. You don't want any travel. You don't want to see the world. You think it's all safe in here. This is what the silver people can do, and uh, sil silver guys can do. And I just uh, do an Eldritch Blast at the foot of Balthazar. Ah. As powerful as a can, which honestly, it's a yeah, can. Still, it's impressive. Can do yeah. anything. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's but good. In, yeah. in saying that, if I can combine these two, yeah. using uh, uh, using intimidation in this case, because it is showing them the power, nice, yeah. but it's also telling them that the silver sides can do this. Ah, okay, good, yeah, and that's not deception. Like you've seen yeah. them basically shoot energy yeah. out of nowhere. But we've seen them do these magic. Right, magic yeah. Well, actually, the shriners out there, yeah, down the yeah. in the field. Very good. Okay, I like the. 
let's talk. Let's do real talk. Kind of yeah. leaning on your axe. Yeah. I do this. I'm gonna. I'll give you a plus three. That was a good line. I don't, I don't actually know how tall. To <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good line. Uh, I think. I think you're using the world facts, like what that the silver's already do it all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think that yeah, you put a full whole things together. So you get a plus three on this right. on your intimidation. Is it intimidation? What's your plus, plus two? Okay. All right. So you definitely yeah. emphasize your intimidation. Go for it. Uh, here we go. Oh, okay. yes! Yes! All oh, right, on! And you said that if we get beat up by five, it's uh, yes, extra? Yes, it does. It's extra! Fantastic, you've totally beaten them. And a 20 really influences them. This is basically, is it, is it sort of like the, the, the silvers, of being scared of the silvers. Yeah. yeah. So this oh. terrifies them about, the, like, you've intimidated so much. So, bye. Five. Actually, is it by ten? Do, do the math. If you roll a twenty, no, if you roll twenty, it's like it's uh, like you roll a twenty. I did twenty. It automatically plus five. Plus five. Yeah, plus five. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Five. Actually, nat yeah. twenty always does it. Yeah, that's great. So this really affects it. Oh man. Uh, intimidation uh, two. Intimidation two and yeah. three here. So, so twenty-five. I got a nat. Yeah, so it's even that. Even without a nat twenty, exactly. Beat by ten. That is fantastic. So they're like, okay, okay, you can instantly battle star backs down. It's like. Oh my God! We're like we're, we're we're like in so much trouble. We shouldn't be here anymore. We should we should go to the bushes and we will hide there until you are done with this. We will uh, we'll pretend to have a spar. We're going to do a shred off over here. Um, I'm going to leave. Uh, I'm going to leave my. I'm going to leave my my precious guitar case. And he, he, he walks away, and he starts a shred off. They're like, okay, boys, let's do a really good shred off. And they're making a lot of noise. So the great thing is you succeeded, right? You now have free access to the door in the mirror, and they're going to look the other way. But you look over his guitar case, and you see a lot of coins. This must be like every busking uh, profit that he's ever made. That's it's, like, it's like two gold pieces worth of very small change. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is 200 copper pieces. Write down 200 copper pieces. Oh, we're taking them from them. Is, that, <laughs> yes. is that all of us? Uh, no, so that's for him. That's, okay. for him. that's right. But you have multiplied by so much that you now are able to unlock them as followers, right? Oh, and as followers, they each give you the gift of another gold, uh, of, of, of other, like just just this little, little bits, like they give tributes, right? Mm -hmm. So each of you write down um, like ceremonial, uh, ceremonial dagger. So, so, so silver, sir, silver ceremonial dagger. They they each give over a, a silver ceremonial dagger. If it's a ceremonial dagger, does that mean we would could use it in as a weapon, or more likely not? It's more uh, like no, a letter. Just, yeah, yeah, it's more like a letter. But yeah, but but cer a ceremonial silver dagger, and these are all worth one gold piece. So they basically this is this is their way of sort of showing you know for fealty to you. Right? Can we give them a Good a, job. A, Guitar, if, if they've got one. And they're enabled as followers. Quick question. Yes. Are there any leftover guitars there? Uh, or did they take them all? Yeah. You, yeah. That's, it's like, so you can take my change or you can take my guitar, but please don't take both. Okay. They're my only link to my musicianship. You may have my guitar, or you may have the wealth that I have created with years of playing guitar on street corners, which you choose, Oval. Oh. No, Take no. the wealth. He needs yeah, the guitar. I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep the. I'll keep the wealth. I'm just thinking for Elfish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, we'll it's find a better one. The guitar is at best worth a couple of gold pieces. It's not a fantastic guitar. <laughs> right on! Congratulations, and that was that. Very good. Very good, people. We, we have to find something for Elfish. Yeah. You each get 75 XP. That was a long scene. You weren't in danger, but that was a very long scene where you used your skills quite a bit, right? So that's half of a medium encounter, by the way. So wow. a, a medium fight would give you more, but you all that? get 75. So that is half of a medium encounter. 75, 75, 75 XP. 650. Okay, you're getting there. Yeah. And you've come away with some loot in various ways. Good job. Okay, we'll come up on the break soon, but I will, I will, I will give you a little twist and something to think about before we break. But good job on that. All right. So now, you look at this door's mirror fragment, and you know they're doing this. They're doing a shred off, but you don't have a lot of time to figure this out. Like you know, they're eager to leave, and they can only keep up the distraction for so long. Like they'll get exhausted. So you have a, a, a few minutes to consider what to do. With this iron door, all the things you've heard about, with the iron door, the ringing bell when the when the handle is up, 
and the uh, mirror fragment that sort of, you know, obviously viewing it and being able to hear it. How do you get through the door without alerting them? It's obviously set up to make it very hard to openly attack whatever's beyond this door. You know, the tacticians, the reds have done this for hundreds of years. It seems to be a system for not being surprised by intruders. You do know that people are coming in and out of this door. You know, the idiots in like Emerald also have come in and out of this door, but the red mirror is like, you know, looking at them and, and, and validating them. This next fight will be more dangerous if you don't figure out how to get through the door because they'll know that you're coming. You think you can get through the door by just holding that handle long enough. Maybe that will work, but in any case, there's going to be a huge alarm bell and they're going to see who's holding up the door. That's plenty of time to know that you're coming. Realizing you are an enemy, not just a red idiot underling for trust. How will you get through the door without doing that? Brainstorm, and you got like a couple of minutes to figure it out. I do have the So it's brainstorm first, so don't cancel out each other's ideas. Just put a lot of ideas on the table, and you all decide as a group on the best one tactic you're going to why don't we just grab one of the the reds and like put like make them a sh like a shield and we just sort of sneak in behind them while they sort of talk to the mirror and we try and <laughs> give me shields nice I don't know yeah. try and get through the door that way like as in use them to mm -hmm. for the mirror sort of thing to go yeah, hey look great. no legit yeah. and then they open it from the other side and we are actually sneaking their... in yeah well yeah. They, yeah they probably have to show the scar and everything. does anyone have a new another shard yeah, that we can only put in someone's chest because yeah. yeah. we, we've already we've already fought we brad really the yeah. brad who was buff dude mm -hmm. so he already knows what we're capable of so again we could try and like an intimidation persuasion thing and go yeah, hey, so yeah everybody get out one idea yeah, so that's yeah. good we have a couple ideas we have we have we have intimidate a red and then helping out and standing like in front of well, I would like to ask if you um, mm. do you have any sort of trap finding or any lock picking sort of skills? Apparently, I would. I would imagine. Oh, investigation. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Roll a quick investigation there, Gary. Okay. Just a D twenty plus your investigation is based on intelligence. Four and three. Three. Okay. So that's better than five. So you fair the yeah, very basics. Yeah. So you test out like you 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 sort of fiddle with the door a little bit. And if you raise the handles like. Ding, 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 they sort of you know, let it go. But mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you're confident like that, like that happens. You just hear on the other side, like a voice comes from far away. It's like, stop fucking with the door. <laughs> Hold it up. Hold it up if you want to come in. <laughs> yes? You don't want to come in. All right, you're an idiot. Stop fucking with us. We're training. <laughs> so you know that holding up the door does, you know, makes the bell ring. Mm -hmm. But also you, you felt like it has some give. And what you're pretty sure is that you felt like a slight tick, 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 ticking through the handle as you hold on to it. So you just think that holding the handle for a full minute will cause whatever's ticking away to like let the door open. It's just a timed lock. It's just like a, it's like a timed safe where you have to hold it up. But the problem, of course, that while you're doing it, you saw with Emerald, they come, they, they use the red mirror fragment mm. to look at whoever's holding the mirror, uh, holding, holding the, uh, the, 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 the handle. Mm. So does that give anybody a new idea of how to do this? Can, We've only got another you, minute left you, um, before you have to vote for the alarm part of it. Why don't we just like why not raise it, but then um, use um, I've got a red mirror fragment, and if I use it um, with blood, I can basically make a um, a two way zoom mirror call, and then oh. if we if we put the mirror up to a, the mirror with the person talking to it, we can distract the person on the other end oh. while the, we open the door. And okay. Yes. Use the anyone that can again. put that up for me. I I was a I was about to say, if you do it to the one that's in the wall, mm -hmm. then they can't see us. Mm -hmm. Everybody roll investigation based mm -hmm. on these ideas. Everybody roll investigation. It's intelligence, so and you could use your investigation no. skill. Right. Yeah. Just eight. No, no help. Zero. Zero one. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Plus. Do I do a plus? Oh, I've got another 20. Oh! 18. 6. 18, okay. So the two of you, you sort of consider this like you, like you think that this, yeah, this, this, this attunement trick, like, like, right, if you can attune the mirror, like you can use the second mirror, but you also realize that, yeah, the attunement, that's it. You know how to, with the Lemurs, remember you had a mirror fragment, as long as you attune to it with some blood, it blanks out. Remember the Lemur can no longer see through the mirror fragment once you attuned to it. If you if you just are touching this mirror from any angle at any point, you can blank it out essentially. If you just give yourself an hour and you just give up a little bit of blood. If well, you I'm now what you're not sure is like, well, will what will they react when the mirror gets attuned? Was your best idea? Like if the mirror goes blank for them, will they notice the mirror's blank? When they come to the door and the mirror's blank, will they just have to base it on you know what you say because they can't see you? You think this is the way to go? We do have it? no way of 
Mm. Canceling but just as being bell. one person doesn't it's a necessary thing. Uh, no, yeah. The, the, it will, so you think that you'll do, they'll hear the bell, but if the mirror is blank, you think mm. they have a lot less on their side to figure out that you're Who's the good person. at deception? Can, can I borrow mm. this for a second? And, Plus two. And, and, and I just wanted to five. draw out what I'm thinking here. Um, and the. But I'm telling you, with, with this, like you're you're sure that this is this is part of the solution. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm just thinking if the if we're looking at this here, here's yeah. the doorway. Yeah, so that's right. I just do this mm -hmm. for the doorway. The um, mirror is about I would say here. Uh, yeah, there's more distance. Yeah, uh, and the mirror uh, has a pretty um, wide field of view. Yeah. I think, yeah. Oh, well, well, somewhere around yeah. around this mm -hmm. area. Yeah. And here's the lever here. Yeah. So we're blanking at this part. No, the lever's in the set in the door. Oh, the lever's yeah, in the door. Yeah, it's like in the middle of the door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I was uh, thinking we have someone over here because then they're, they're not going to know anyone's coming in. They don't know who's done it. They're just going to send someone to investigate. Mm -hmm. We jump them. Someone uh, over here jumps them. Maybe some mm -hmm. someone over here. No one standing right in front of the door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, deception, mm -hmm. of course. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got a uh, someone who's really good at surprise, surprise yeah. attacks. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I gang order comes to the door. Because I, I acquired a goblin sniping hat. Does that help us any? <laughs> it's we, good we, in natural environments. Yeah, so we need to do a stat check on that because I think we ran out of time. Oh, it just it gives you a plus one on your stealth if you stay still in a vegetative yeah, it's, 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 it's mostly for looks. It's, it's, it's useful. It's useful. Yeah. No, that's good because I have no stealth. So you can hide around it. I know that, that they can't see this way, but that's why they have to come to the door anyway and yeah. open up the door. Mm. So okay, I'm well, going to do a sneak attack. Yep. Let, let me let me give you a little a little scene before mm -hmm. we go into the break uh, because because you you've come up with a good idea. Here's how it goes down. All right, first of all, you know that one of you has to attune to the mirror fragment. One of you has to give up a hit point, and uh, you just need to feed it blood. You have to because the mirror is sort of embedded in there. You just need you, it won't give you a permanent scar. You just need to feed it some blood. Fine by me. Done it okay. before. You're gonna lose a hit point. Yep. Okay, so take away one hit point. And you realize when you do this, like you, you can kind of you kind of get flat on the wall. You know, like the reds are kind of looking over at you, but they're they're trying not to pay attention, you know. So so you're sort of hanging up on the wall, you're sort of like dripping blood onto it, and you're just putting your finger just on the very tip of the mirror. So you think that'd be very hard for you. So you just need to be touching the mirror somehow. So you're kind of flat against the wall and just kind of touching it like that, right? As you drip blood on it. And you feel kind of lock in, like, yep, mm -hmm. this is gonna work. So just wait. And so as this happens, the, 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 the idiots, the, so Balsar says, you know, basically gives, gives this signal. And he's sort of, yeah, okay, dudes, let's, uh, let's do some, uh, some push-ups. And so basically they're less noisy, but they seem to give an indicate like, yeah, this will work, just wait. So you wait. So for an hour. You can all take a short rest if you want to, if you don't need to. Could I use my skill of medicine to help the blood flow faster so this ah, speeds up? <laughs> sure, yeah, I think. Actually, roll, roll medicine. Uh, yeah, real quick. So we'll coming out and goes, medicine. Seven. A seven, yeah. I, I, unfortunately, well, I think that would was cut, wasn't it? Because it hit the side of your... Well, if it was if it was sitting flat, it okay. needs to just be yeah. sitting. It, it's yeah. okay. It, it, was, flat. it rolled flat. under and just. I flat. thought it might have hit the side. To stop it's okay if it hit something on the way, okay. so rolling flat, but as long as it settles. No, flat. like it wasn't like tilted. It was good like, try. Just, I was trying to help out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> after so you, so a short, you can all do short rest. I don't think you need to. Mm -hmm. So after oh, the right. hour, which is what it takes to attune, uh, you you know that that is blanked out. Mm -hmm. And after a few minutes, you're wondering like that, and you hear a voice outside, Oi! You losers! If you attune that mirror fragment for anything but SOEC business, I will pull out your fingernails! You hear me? You have one hour before I come out there, or I'm gonna get fucking busy. Use it for whatever the fuck you're doing, but that's my fucking mirror! Stop borrowing it! I mean it! But, you don't hear it come any closer. Now you know the mirror is blank. So now you figure, okay, well, they can't see it, and you don't think they can hook it up again. For what you know, like to reattune it, they have to actually sacrifice it. So you just so you decide maybe with this sort of configuration like holding up the handle, trying to get so if they come, you're ready to jump them. So you hold it up there. Ding 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 ding. So you're holding it. And you hear, All right, who's coming through? And you can, but it's at a distance. You say, Who's that? Who's coming through? One of you could probably use a, a pretty easy deception roll to oh. just say the name of somebody that's here. Two, so. I was going to say, I can use Thaumatology Cantrip with a booming voice and try and disguise my voice as one of the, oh, yeah. the yes. red. So Yes. Uh, okay. I was going to say, it's like, again, I'm going to go go and use um, Brad. Yeah. Buff, buff, <laughs> buff guy. And just, yeah, use Thaumatology to kind of yes. kind of this big booming. Yes, Brad. Yeah, it's just, it's just me, Brad. I'm just, <laughs> I, I just, 
I'm just wanted to come in for uh, someone. <laughs> I don't, I don't, someone had to feed me lines. Dude, I want to come in. I've got a shard of me, but bro, it won't open. Yes, how do you, how, I want to come talk to someone higher up. Why'd you get Emerald uh, a shard, <laughs> not me? Oh, was he first? Oh, God, I'm, 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 Go for a brand. Go for a brand. Look, 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 I've been here longer, man. Like, boy. Oh, God. He's an elf. I can't keep up an accent. That was terrible. That was great. Well, that works color. very well. And so so uh, the the other reds that are the red idiots, there's like the one of like Pope's person, dude, like 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 this one's like better than you. Like this one's like more Brad than Brad. Don't you think this one's more Brad than Brad? I think this one's more Brad. Than Brad. <laughs> Brad feels upset. <laughs> Brad's crying in the corner somewhere. Brad. 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 And Brad. They, they quietly start arguing Brad's over status. their pronoun because they, they can't figure out. Like, Whoa, like, what's well, up that? The surely pronoun. that convinces even more than yeah, exactly. presenting masculine. That's right. In this exactly. Stage, like, in this the, environment. More Brad than Brad. The, pr- awesome. the pronoun is Brad. <laughs> okay. So you Talk say that thaumaturgy makes it <laughs> makes it makes it uh, uh, yes. The muffling from the door, the thaumaturgy, it disguises enough that obviously it works. You say, right, we're training in the back. Now just shut up and watch until we're done. Come on in. And footsteps basically, you know, are you just you just hear the noise settle down. So you think the way is clear. Good job. So, I'm going to set the scene for the conflict as it is. What you do is you open the door, and it's a corridor. You got a glance of this. It's a corridor that starts off behind a five foot door, a 15 foot wide corridor. It goes uphill slightly, sort of slight ramp. It narrows down to a five foot wide corridor and ends in another iron door. It's a fairly long corridor. When you're in there, eventually, just fast forwarding, you realize it's a bit like an airlock system. Like, you go up in as quickly, as quietly as possible with the road, like you're checking out, no traps. You try raising that. The door can just open, uh, can open, you think it happened freely, but the, but the handle, like, it doesn't move at all. And you realize with your sort of investigation skills, like, try closing that door back behind you. You close that door, and now this one can open. It's like an oh. airlock. Both doors can't be Deadly. opened at the same time. Indeed. So you very quietly say, okay, well, this is designed to, like, we have to commit to being in this room. Like, once we open that door, we won't be able to open this door again for a while, you think. But... You know, you decide, like, well, they, you hear very distantly behind the door, like, working out, you know, sort of like, you know, clanging of weights and, you know, things like that. So <laughs> I was gonna say, that's exactly the science going yeah. through my head. <laughs> so, so you don't think there's any way that's to avoid so being in that corridor. So you're going to be in this corridor with no easy retreat. You're going to have to commit to this room. But, hey, this is the red way. If you, if you want to fight like the reds, this is designed to make a confrontation. But heroes that you are, I think you would decide to just plunge ahead mm-hmm. after can the break. Can investigate the door to see if there's a way to disable the lock on the, mm-hmm. on the door? On the, <laughs> It seems very iron, like, like just whatever is like heavy iron is sunk yeah. deep into the stone. It goes deep into the cave work. That sort of weird melted stone appearance is sort of worked over it. Whatever mm. is done is like there is no getting through without much higher level yes. spells and magic than you have. So oh, you have to go through. Yeah, I was going to say, you, I've got be stone good. cunning, but that wouldn't help with the iron. Yeah, and that, that's enough to make yourself pretty sure. So you see a room, which I have, well, I'll, I'll have to touch that up. You see a large room with a bunch of pillars. Uh, and way in the back of the sound of workout is there's a dim red light in this room. It's low ceiling with these big square pillars. They have all kinds of like different kinds of wallpaper, like weird faded wallpaper and weird like slots and holes and all these sort of like wooden columns everywhere. But the columns are sort of blocked away. They're all like tight little corridors. But you can just sort of hear way in the distance that there's that workout. You seem to have this room to yourself. And there's nobody waiting for you. You oh. seem to have your run of this dim room to try to get a drop on these guys. Can I ask, Good is job. it wallpaper or is it like old concert uh, posters, like faded um, tour posters. I would love to say yes to that, but I do have a purpose for them being like like actual sort of fancy wallpaper in various sorts. Not sure why. We're going to take a break, come back in a few minutes, and we will get stuck in with... uh, Oh, one last question, sorry. Melee or parlay? So... This is something I always want to do. Very often people will, will will choose melee, right? But parlay, I've described before. You can say, no, what we're going to do is surprise them and basically propose parlay. The rules of parlay are sort of like a divine thing, right, where you don't get to double-cross them. Parlay, you do more soft skills, sort of like this. It's in a somewhat different format. The more reasons that you have for them, now you're going to try to convert them. Like, you've already converted the idiots, but these are like their bosses, right? So you want to have some arguments for why they should join you and let you through. Parlay can go three different ways. If you do really well, then, so no, no matter what, you won't have a combat, right, with them. If you do really well, you have no combat with them, and they rust onto your idea, like they become basically adherents, like now you've got converts on your side. That's great. If it goes really badly, 
you won't have a fight, but the only reason they're not letting you fight is that they're conniving against you. They know all of your weaknesses now. You've discovered hardly any of their weaknesses, and they have a great way to stab you in the back later on. They're going to betray you. You're going to face them later, stronger than ever. You're going to wish that you had fought them instead. Yeah? But you, don't, you won't get to fight them. You know, you'll be passing through, but it'll end up stabbing you in the back if you don't do well. And then there's in the middle. Again, you won't have a fight. You don't really change them. They don't become allies, but they don't stab you in the back, but at least it neutralizes a fight. So there's kind of three different outcomes. And a lot of it is based on like how much do you just feel like fighting as opposed to how much do you feel like talking. Each one is a fine choice, melee or parlay. You know, your overall chances of having a great story are about the same. Um, which one do you want to do? I say parlay. It's a, gr it's a group vote. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm voting me melee. Mm. I was thinking melee. Yep. Um, I don't really mind, but I'm also getting sleepy because they're dirty somehow, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, so can I head off? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can. I I can gonna, I that's fine. No, I, I, can, I can adjust the, the whatever okay. next scene I can adjust with players after leave. Okay, sorry. Um, that's fine. But if I. Well, then let's have a Then okay. I won't vote. <laughs> okay. I hate to say it, but. Melee. All right. <laughs> We're going to come back and do melee. <laughs> I'll let you out with the gate. Thank okay, you for thanks. coming, Anthony. And we'll take a break. Come back you in 10 minutes. Strategy. I'll set up, this, set up for a fight. We'll do a whole recap. Okay. Okay, so we are back. Uh, so... Uh, we're first going to set the scene here, uh, and yeah, the, about the room. So remember, it's dim red light in this room. The pillars do go from floor to ceiling. They're apparently made of wood, but it's fairly tough wood. There's different, every single pillar seems to have a different sort of layer of wallpaper, and they all seem like fancy wallpapers, the kind of thing you'd see in like sort of like government offices and fancy houses. But then there's some wallpaper that sort of like, it looks like wattle, like it would be something you have in a pub. It's, there's all these different kinds of wallpaper in different columns. The floor is all a cave, right? It all has been sort of smoothed out and chipped and honed to make it a roughly flat floor. But the, f the floor has been painted with red bricks, but they're just paintings of red bricks on various uh, floors, walls, and ceilings are painted uh, as red uh, bricks. Oh, I was going to say, are they paintings? Or are they they're just painted, painted. painted as sort of red <laughs> stamps there. <clears throat> And you hear the sounds of work out in the back, but you can't see from the position that you're in that I'm about to put you in. You can see there's a door on the far side with a big, complicated-looking handle on the other side. It doesn't look like the kind of door that you can just run through. It's obviously, it's a door that requires something special to open up. But, uh, but you only hear what's the rest. So you couldn't figure out how to avoid being in this corridor. This is just the end of the corridor here. So this corridor goes back a long ways. But you know that being all of you bottled up in a corridor is not a great way to fight. You know, spreading out in this room is probably a good idea. This, was, this funneled us in. It was like it funneled you in. Like yeah. This, this, is a great, this is a great thing to defend from. If you have people coming in, this is a great way to fight them. Luckily, nobody's here. So you decide to plunge ahead. So you don't want to have people clogged up in the corridor. So everyone, place your chips somewhere in this area. One of you can, can be back here if you want, but it's really not smart for you to stack up, so I didn't bother to put there. The rest of you need to be within, with, within like, Six like it's like six uh, squares of coming in here. So put yourself wherever you want. What you're doing is you're exploring the room as quietly as possible, expecting an attack at any point. You know where the noise is coming from. You don't know, of course, what's hidden. I've considered your passive, uh, your passive uh, perceptions and all that. So, so you haven't detected anything else apart from the noise in the back. Just show where you are at one point in time as you explore. This has to be within, like, yeah, a six square march of, of that first square. Is that close enough to be six? One, yeah. two, three, four. Oh, I can, yeah, move, sure. I can move further forward. Okay. Cool. Yep. Um, so position yourself, sort of in your ready for anything position. Um, Not knowing where the attack is coming from, apart from knowing the noise of the reds is down there. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm behind enough this column, but maybe just be able to see. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So as it is, yeah, you're not really re revealing anything else that's drawn on that end of the room. You just know that you're getting a little bit closer to it. Okay, good. You're all good. As you're moving, somehow, this loud, like, Artificial squeaking sound, like a squeaky floorboard, but magnified to be really loud. Just under one of you, as you step just on regular stone, you hear like a cartoon-like sound of a, of a floorboard. Damn. It's the floor's made of stone, but the noise you hear is like, "Oi!" from down there. And the training reds he hear this and see you, so they're going to come check it out. Uh, but I'm going to put them on the other side of the room, and. We will roll initiative after that. So let me position this. Give me a moment. I'm 100 percent preparing for a rock concert Wait, because I've got so many songs in my head. We're in the mosh pit now. <laughs> okay. So for this first round, 
Yeah, I'm going to be scooting this back and forth yeah. a lot, so we'll need clear. Right. You just know, you just tell from the direction they're over here somewhere, but I'm just going to stack them up. You know, you just know they're behind these columns. I'm not going to guarantee where they are. You just know that they're from there. But as you know, things start, you don't hear any other enemies around you. For all you know, the only enemies are down that way. You just hear the tromping of feet that are still hidden behind these columns because they've all started in that workout area. And we're going to roll initiative, right? And we're going to do this actually properly. I'm going to teach you actual proper initiative rolls done old school. I'm not even going to use my computer. I've got some numbers here, the right things. When you roll initiative, roll a d20 and add your dexterity bonus. Oh, yeah. that's bad. Technically, you're adding yeah. your initiative bonus, but everybody, this just means your dexterity bonus. Special classes have bonuses to initiative that would apply here. Oh. Natural 20. Oh, 19. Wow. 19. Oh. Okay, so oh, well, let's go around. Sorry. No, yeah, no. just tell me, tell me total, so make, make sure. Four. Uh, 18. 18. 20, 20, 23. 16, 17, 18. This is Vol. Yep. Yeah. What is yours? Four. 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 Have you taken the one off? Yep. Yep. Okay. 23. 23. Okay, so Saria. And 14. 14. Okay. All right, so Saria, Vol, Schmarag, and Shudian. I have rolled, or I'm going to roll here with my computer, the initiative of everything else in this room, and I'm going to just do this. Watch, watch, watch them get to this area here. <coughs> no, I was just thinking, you, you just said you are going to do this old school, no computer. I'm going to get to it. No, no, it's, it's so much faster to do it this way. It's like, I, I, I want to save time. I want to teach you how to do it. I don't need to teach myself how to roll initiative. What, Thank you very what, much. Watch how he's just got <coughs> a list of different characters. Just going, din, 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 din. <laughs> Okay, so I've rolled the initiatives of everybody else. And we go through, so you won't know their initiative until I get to their spot in the list, right? So I'll start off with the one that is the fastest initiative, and that is going to be Saryeth. Now, I have sort of a house rule. I don't know why it's not an official D&D rule. If at the beginning of a battle you really don't want to be proper initiative, say, I want to artificially lower my initiative to number X. You can change your on your turn once only. You can move your initiative downward for whatever reason. But of course, you're just, you're just disadvantaging, right? Because mm. you, you, you may be going below an enemy you can't see. So. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yes. what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to move back because now we know that they're around this area somewhere. Yes, all, uh, so you hear the moving of feet, and now you're pretty sure that they're most tightly in that area where all those little sort of things are drawn on the floor, little weights and things, but well, you don't know exactly where. I'm going to try to around. move back to here. Yeah, so, so, and you're here? doing it just properly. So, what, let me, uh, so the best thing to do is keep the chip where it is, count that with your finger, because you might experiment. Uh, and also, I might interrupt you at some point. Okay. Yeah, yeah move, scoot these things around. Yeah. Slide yeah, the map. So move your stuff back enough yeah, so people yeah, can move so the map around as they might. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, nine. So, you're, so you can move six squares. Okay. Um, if you want to move nine, you can use your action to dash. That means okay. that I'd rather get around this corner. So you can take here. no action. You can try diagonal if you can. And remember, you can't go can diagonal. You can't go diagonal. Kitty core okay. through a solid uh, like that. You have okay. to count it out. So. One, two, three. I want to go behind this column here. Mm -hmm. And then I want to cast. Um, There's our coward. <laughs> <laughs> I want to cast False Life, which is a 1d4 plus. Okay, sure. Plus, mm, so two plus False Life is, I think, three. Sorry, sorry. Okay, no, it's fine. You can do that. So you, I'll, that's I'll fine. Do, I'll add it. Yeah, you do, do it uh, on, on, as an external. And then I want to pass my turn because I don't think. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's fine. All right. Plus four different hit points, so five extras. The next fastest one, according to my list, is Emerald with a twenty-two. So I'm going to add him here, so you'll know now, for the rest of the battle, he's going to go just after Saryath and before all of you. Imeril, he'll be brown number one, because he is the, he's the implanted one, though he's not so badass if he gets his skull token. <laughs> he's obviously from back here. Ooh, but he can't see any targets. I was going to say, is there any of us who are taking the game for Yeah. So, all right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a target. Now, th those of you who are not stealthy, if someone's not stealthy and you're within some distance, they know what square you're in if they can't see you. So if he's moving in a way that, that sort of knows where you are, it's because you're not actually stealthed, right? Because that takes an action. One, two, three, four, five, six, he can see you. He goes over here. Mm -hmm. 
and sights, and who's this? Me. All right, Smarag, well, you know, you're, you're supposed to be taking shots. And he pulls out his bow. I was like, I've been waiting a long time to shoot you. You're going to regret coming in here, whatever you are. Insultingly. And he shoots at you. Uzi dude, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Be the a longbow towards you, Smarag. <laughs> With a six, it just hits the column next to you. Oh. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> yes! Well, tarnation, that was, just a, that, was, that was just a warning shot. I got my other one. He does a multi-attack. He's able to fire twice on his turn now that he's powered up. You've never seen him fire this turn. And with an 11, it hits your armor. Oh. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it hits your armor but does not penetrate. Uh, now he did, God, he moved all of his, he moved all of his speed to get, to get there. It's like, he takes a step, like his eyes widen because he sees you looking at him. He's like, uh-oh. And he tries to move, but he's, he has already moved to his extent, he cannot continue and get in cover. You think that he wishes that he did. That was him. Who is next? What's that initiative? Okay, Vol, you are next. Okay. Too bad you're far, too far away. I can't do what I was going to do. Save it. Oh, no, no. It's too far away for the distance between it. the two of us. is too far away for this one. I'm going to try to play it a bit more stealthy even though it's not my one I, and i want to check something here um for minor illusion do you have to be able to see the location let me look up i haven't seen anywhere where it, where it says you have to so yeah has, sure. you usually will say a spot you can see uh but I'll, i need to add it on here anyway because yeah. there might be other things we need to look up so so i believe you but i'm, I'm just going to put it because i like reading it anyway so minor illusion Yep. I only see that it's within range. Yep, has to be within range. You have to have but a line of effect to it. That's fine. Within thirty feet, within range. Yeah, no, that's fine. So, so you, you have to have a, you have to have a line of effect to it. But as long as as long as like a snake could find it, you know, it could be a curvy line of effect. Okay. Yeah. Um, just because, let's face it, someone there is going to be at some point someone's trying to do do something here. I want to cast an illusion, and it's only a five. Oh shit! It's only a five. Yep, it has, can't exceed a five foot cube. It has to be, if it's visual, it has to be, you know, it's frozen. It's and each still one of these is five foot, isn't it? Yes. Damn, mm -hmm. okay. I needed a ten foot to do what I wanted to do. Unfortunately not. There are more powerful illusion spells to make bigger illusions, but you're just getting started on this. Okay, okay. it's combat. We gotta go. Okay, mm -hmm. then in this case, let's go with the other option here. Creating a sound here, which is six away. Yep. And so... It's 30 meters. Yeah. Of the be the bell, the alarm from the door. So that sound mm -hmm. creating over here. Huh, okay, great. Ding, 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 ding. Sort of emanating from here. Yeah. All right. Uh, why just roll deception just as a general idea of just, you know, I'll, I'll sort of change the world based on how good yeah. your deception is. It means, so it means you've judged this correctly. That it's going to have the kind of there is a, um, well, What is your desire to go ahead and roll first? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just to get everyone to look over yeah, this way rather than yeah. everyone you, else. So, so it's actually like an arcane, so it's basically intelligence because you're, you're, no, no, it's your charisma. So you use, it's a charisma role, but are you trained in deception? Or do you have a, a dot next to deception? I have a plus two in deception, but it's not one That's of That's fine. Those. So we yeah. can do so many can split things. So I say I'll, I'll make you roll with charisma because of the magical effect that you're making, right? Yeah. But you get to add two because you're trained in deception. So you can actually mix and match your proficiency. So, you're, so it gives you an, a, a nice a nice advantage there. So charisma mm -hmm. plus two. Okay. Is that, a, is that what I think it is? That's no a good. nine. Oh, that's a nine. Okay, yeah. So okay. I know. Oh, I thought it was a two as well. Yeah. Eleven. Yeah. I look. I also. Yeah. So nine plus your charisma plus two yeah. is what? Uh, it's thirteen. Uh, charisma is plus two. Just give me a total. So, oh, so you've rolled that. Yeah. Roll yeah, thirteen. Okay. So this has got basically a sort of deceptive power of thirteen. I'm going to consider that based on. Okay. So what what would success look like? Are you trying to attract them to that spot? Scare them away from that spot? Attract them to that spot. Okay. Attract them to that spot. Right. If they go into this spot, then you guys can snipe them. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And okay. I can walk away from that spot, and it's not going to affect it. It's going right. to just stay there. Okay, very good. That was Vol. Next are actually the red, so I have to decide what to do with this with this clever move. So all of the other reds are going to move. Emerald gets his own move because he's so clever and fast and healthy. So... And weak. Yes. Mm. <laughs> 
Okay. So I'm going to roll basically a quick invest. If the base is for free, you know, they don't have to use an action to do this. It's just basically sort of how prepared are they for this. It really kind of comes with, uh, this means that maybe it's something that would normally attract them, but they also know it sound really well, like they know whether you fake the sound really well. So I'm just going to do an intelligence check based on these guys, fair and square. So I'm going to add their intelligence bonus and just see which one wins. I'm going to add plus two to this because it's their territory. So they're mm -hmm. proficient at knowing what belongs here, right? So intelligence plus two. 12 plus 2 is actually a 14, just barely enough that it doesn't quite distract them. It might distract them a little bit, but very close, a good idea. If I had rolled just another point or two lower, they might have been attracted there, but this does not work. That's okay. It was worth a try. So you did that. Um, your action did that, and you've already done moving, so yeah. your turn is over. Okay, so undeceived by your bell, it is their turn to go. Hmm. I know where you are. I bet we move this closer to Oh, today. thanks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got good sight lines here. Okay, so you hear some running and dashing, right? So... Okay. So they're dashing from this area. They go one, two, three, four... Yeah, they're gonna. They're, they're, you you can hear where they are. You think the two of them are moving as a pair, but they're flattening themselves up against the wall, and they're doing something else, but you're not sure what. Yes, that's what they're doing. Okay, so they move, but you're not sure what else they're doing, and that was their move. Now you know that they are on there. Now we're now at Schmaragd. Okay, I'm now. Going to da, 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 da. all right. You said we heard them sort of get there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you know where they are. You just can't see. You know a sight line to them. You know if, if you if you can see a piece of them, they have cover. Three, so they'll have a plus two to their AC four, if they're kind of only partly visible. Five, four, one, two, three, four, five. I want to see what they're up to, so I'm going to move here. Okay. Two, three, four, five. As soon as you become there, they have held an action to shoot at you. You see uh, one, uh, this is a guy that you haven't seen before, but he's buff like Emeril. Emeril is still, you know, he's buff but lithe and he has a bow. This guy has got a big heavy crossbow and he's even beefier. He has a scar on his chest but it's healed over. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's just got this cruel, aggressive look in his eyes, but he has a mace hanging by his side. So he, he looks like a real version, or a one less photocopied version of the red. So he looks more like an abandful red, though still not quite right. He fires a crossbow at you, Shmaragd. But with a five, he completely bungs it. So he goes like, like the bow itself slaps against the column because you've been pushing it too low, sort of pushes it back. Ah, fuck! And, it's like, and this guy over here, you don't get a uh, chance to see him, but you hear the voice of the guy like, well, that's so spectacular. It's a sort of insulting sort of look. So you can continue your action. That was his held action. Awesome. So I can have an action and a bonus, can't I? Yes, you can. Okay. I am... So... I, can I actually now see him because he's under yes, the Yes, he has cover. There? So if you shot at him with a bow, he would have cover. But if you used a spell on him, he would have no cover. I'm just trying to does um, Guiding Bolt need to be a straight line? It does. So it's like firing an arrow. So he'd have a plus two to his AC. Because Guiding Bolt goes against AC, he'd have a plus two to his AC. However, like the other guys there, you're seeing that he's largely bare-chested. He has leather pants on. He's muscly and he's beefy, but he doesn't look like he's wearing particularly effective armor. Okay. So you can only take a guess as to his AC that way. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just rereading Spiritual Weapon. Ah. Creating a floating spectral weapon within range, which, yes. and the range is 60 feet. Good. Um, that I can make a melee spell attack against a creature within five feet of the weapon. Uh, on a hit, the target takes blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, as a right. bonus action. I can So I can do that as a bonus action as well as an actual action. Okay. Uh, no, so it's only bonus action. So you cast with the bonus action, and this turn it'll attack. Every other turn you can keep using your bonus uh, action to have it keep attacking. Oh, okay. Great stuff. All right. So where do you make it appear, and who do you have it attack? I am going to go for this guy, number two. The guy who shot? Okay. So let's um, use, what does your spiritual weapon look like? It can look like any weapon you like that symbolizes your link to your god. Ooh. Does it have to be a weapon, or can it be, just be anything that has uh, to be a spe weapon? Floating spectral weapon. Oh, um, 
I mean, we can be creative if you like, but it would be more badass if it's a weapon. <laughs> I can't think on the top of it. All, all, honestly, all I can picture at the moment is basically like a crucifix yeah. that's been sort of formed so it has like uh, point, pointy, stabby bits at the end. <laughs> right like on. one of those ones that has like where the ends doesn't sort of I'm curls over. For you. And, and <laughs> yes, <laughs> a pointy, stabby crucifix appears. Yeah. Put it in any square. Because that's where it appears. That's be within that oh, range. Oh, that's right, within range. So mm-hmm. I could actually have it. Yeah. But it can only attack, you can only do melee attacks, right? So yeah, you, you, within five. Yeah. So I could have it appear. One, two, if you did, it wouldn't be able to attack. So so it, it can't okay. move. So it appears and attacks. In this this turn, it's going to appear and attack. So to have it attack, it has to be next to somebody. Okay. It's spectral. It can be moved through by both of you. So it's just a, a ghostly thing that does damage. Right. Okay. So I think I misunderstood the the. 12, 60 feet of range. Okay. Um, okay, so Great. I now can... Uh, so to check if I can hit it, I do this plus... I do, do Your plus spell, attack, spell bonus. attack bonus. Very good, exactly. Okay, let's see if it works. Guess AC. Uh, <gasps> oh, yes. natural 20 especially. Yeah. So 20 is always a hit. You okay. never have to do the math. Okay. And you, all your damage you roll twice. So Spectre is a spiritual weapon. Does damage, yes. Uh, I don't know if you've got it written down. I'll look it up for you if you want. I think it said a 1d8, so instead I get to do 2d8. Two two D8. D8. Yes. But the plus 3 just stays as plus 3. Uh, yeah, that's right, exactly. Okay. Oh, do I need to point out I was doing this as a second level spell? Because uh, it is a second level? Yes, that's fine. No, that's fine. You don't have okay. to say it, but as long as you're racing a second level slot to okay. do this. Um, and it was, I get to roll the 2d8s. Yes. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. Whoo! 11 points of damage slams into this beefy dude with this big pointy crucifix, just stabs him. Like, it's like, what the fuck is that? And this thing just comes at him and stabs him in the chest. Ah! And as it pulls out, it sort of hisses, like it flashes with light. And so, and it just, it hisses in his skin. Oh, it's just a beautiful thing because it does radiant damage, I believe. And yeah, plus your spell casting modifier. 11, good job. And you, it will continue to hover there. And every time you, you can take a bonus action to continue doing that. Excellent work. Minus and that counts 11. as my um, action for this turn, then. That counts as your bonus action. You can still take an action. Okay. Shit. Um, your action could be to dodge, which just means that things have disadvantage to hit you. That could be nice. Uh, or you, can, uh, you can't cast another spell with your action unless it's a cantrip. You can cast a cantrip, so you can cast, you know, Sacred Flame, for example. I was going to say, why not? He's already weak and injured, and yeah. I'm now in line of sight. No. <laughs> am, I, am I still in line of sight, even around the corner? Uh, he can see you. So can I see him and yes. to cast... Mm-hmm. Um, now, yeah. that's right, Sacred Flame would still give him plus two because he's got the corner. No, 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 it's, uh, it's just a saving throw. Okay. So, yeah. So he would roll a, refla- a dexterity saving throw. Sound good? Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. Ah, he dodges out of the way. He's so busy, like, pulling out this sort of spectral cross that just out of bad luck, he steps exactly away from the thing you cast under his feet. So he okay. doesn't get toasted a second time. That was Smarad. Good job. I think you've moved all of your move. You must be done. Yeah. There are no other enemies. So Shudian, you are next. We didn't skip anybody, did I? I feel like we skipped somebody. No, no? okay. No. Shudian, you're next. And then yes. we'll go to the top of the initiative. Um, can I... Can I move and do uh, like an action surge to get an extra move? You certainly can. An action surge gives you an entirely new action, which you can do with anything. It's very okay. powerful. So I take my six. Is one, two. Yeah, you can't do that diagonally. So you, have to, you, you can't move oh, a diagonally one, two, through a quarter like that. Yeah. Three, four. Five. No, it's another day. You did another oh, day. So yeah. No, no, you can do diagonals as long as not. You just can't oh, cut a diagonal okay. through this oh, particular yeah, kind that, of corner. That's one, two, three, four. No. So sorry. One, two, three, four, five. five. Yeah. Yep, six. There you go. Yep, that's I'm cool. Good. I'm good there. Uh, yeah. I just want to get up to somewhere here. Yeah. Um, so another three squares. Good. Yeah. All right. So yeah. just move yourself there. Yep. All right. Yeah. This brings you in line to the boss who's pointing a crossbow at you. He's been holding an action waiting for somebody to shoot. But you have a plus two to your AC because he's he's going around this corner. So he's clipping that corner. Mm-hmm. So you have partial cover. So remember your AC is plus two as this crossbow bolt comes towards you with a five. So he curses like, ah, oh, you, 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 you stupid fool. This is how you fire it like this. But he does the exact same thing. Like he also <laughs> leans close. Or like the, the other guy sort of like pushes him a little bit. So he sort of leans forward just as he fires and the bow sort of pushes against the wall, pushes back. It's like, Oh, fuck you! <laughs> so they get into a little argument. They seem very competitive with each other. And that is why he missed. And the crossbow bolt just flies off. It doesn't even fire straight. 
Good job. <laughs> so you can continue your action. Okay, so I just want to continue uh, to a shelter position, probably. Action. Right, so you can use your action surge to, uh, so, you, so you have two choices. You could use your existing action to dash. That means you can move another six squares and you're done. Okay. You could use your action surge to dash, and then you still have an action to do whatever you like. So you can dash to an even better position and shoot. Does that make sense? Yep. Could I um, load up an action for next time? Yes, you can hold an action. So yeah, you get into a position saying, I'm going to hold yep. this action so that I'm going to against, you know, shoot at whoever okay. comes in view if you have your bow out. Three, four, five. Yeah. Is, is there a just yes. mm -hmm. behind here? So that's. Uh, Right. Yep. And, and held action. Okay. Yeah. So you can hold your action on the way. Let's say you didn't have your weapons drawn, or when you came in, do you think you had your bow ready, or do you think you have your weapon ready? Because your javelin. held action has to be used that javelin. way. A javelin. Okay, yeah. you've got yeah. a javelin ready. So you're going to stay. So this is good. It means you'll attack it with a javelin. You can either stab or throw it. You have the option to do either. That's a nice thing about a javelin. Mm -hmm. So basically, any enemy that is able to be attacked, you're going to attack from that yep. position. Okay. okay. So remember, you're holding that action. You've got to remind me when that gets fulfilled. Okay. Good job. We're at nine o'clock, but I assume we can go a little bit longer, or do you want to, you know, uh, this, this combat, we, we might even be able to finish this yeah. combat as it is, if you're willing to stay closer to 9.30. How do you feel about it? Like, is it seriously yeah. just those three guys? Looks like, <laughs> but there's some there's some surprises still. <laughs> and also, saying, like I said, this is like the squeaky, squeaky floor to work this out. This is part of an adventuring day as well. Mm -hmm. So I think so we go through another round and see what happens. Okay, mm -hmm. great. All right. Uh, who's at the top? The Sorry, yeah. it's your turn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to move up to here, so... Uh, one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. Yep, that's legal. Good, yep, you move without incident. Um, I've got really nothing to... I can't aim at anyone or anything. Sorry, I'm right in the way, aren't yeah. I? <laughs> 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 yeah, he chose to move there. It's fine, I'm playing a bit more defensive of this game. Um, I'm only a little, you can look over me. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give it, can I give you cover with mold earth and try to create a little bit of earth? So um, no, it it does exactly what it says. So I have to interpret it strictly, which means okay. it makes it makes it difficult terrain that they can't move through easily uh, and okay. all the other things. But it can't okay. rise to the case of it. Uh, an illusion, by the way, you can create an illusion of a block that does mm. create visual cover, which is yeah. basically just as good as anything. Mm. Somebody invisible. Mm -hmm. So that, that's an example of things that you can't uh, with that. That I can't. I think I'm going to use a bonus action. To um, a point with do you use your finger first. Oh, you yep, smart. One, two, three, four. Up behind here. So you can't use your bonus action to move further. Okay. You can use your action to dash. Action so, to dash. Yeah. Would be and then, but now you don't have an action if you do. That's this. fine. That's okay. Where I'm yeah. Be. And you can you can move entirely. So you can move another six squares with with the dash. Yeah. A dash basically adds thirty more feet to your movement speed, which you can continue. Done that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was sorry. Yes. Next is Emerald, number one. Right over there. Okay. He knows where you all are on the board. He just can't necessarily see you. Uh, fine. Uh, I'm a little bit better at distance, boss. Yes, uh, yes, yes, but just you, you know when to come in, Emerald. You, uh, you know that being close has its advantages as well. And he taps his nose, but that's okay. He's going one, two, three, four, five, six might be good. One, two... He's going for a barbell. Yeah. <laughs> Stop him. He's, he's trying to get free more gashed after free weights. <laughs> gash? Gash. Gash? Uh, I don't know. Swole. That's it. He wants to be more swole. <laughs> he's going for whey protein. <laughs> he's going for a... Uh, He'll be unstoppable. Going for a medicine ball. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that wizard's around here somewhere. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I like to poke a few holes in that goddamn wizard. He's going to cause us trouble. He's a crafty one. I think I'm going to go hunting Can for him. Gains? Get more gains? Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Gains. I, I can't remember. Okay. Okay. I went through a gym phase. I never did. <laughs> ah. Guns out, guns out. So, he's, so he knows someone's around here. He just doesn't know who, but he's going to take a chance. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can just barely see you. I got cover. Yep, you partial got cover. cover. Yeah, I got partial cover. Yep. Oh, I found him! I found him! Kill the cloth! Kill the cloth! And they and he fires at you. Kill the cloth? <laughs> kill the cloth! Kill the cloth! Isn't that the cloth. WoW? It's like the old days of WoW, kill the cloth. Is. Or, 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 or in PvP, in MMO PvP. I just king. You're gonna have to stop so in PvP, PvP MMOs, kill Spirit the cloth is always what you would yell on the bottom line because it means, you know, always target whoever has the lowest AC to get to the spell Kill the cloth, Emerald says! I played Druid. 
And with the first longbow shot, with a five, he does a one. It's like it slips out. It's like, God damn it! This, 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 this place is humid, he says. So he pulls out another bow. He's able to fire again. He's Come on, Emerald. The humidity now. With ten, he doesn't. No, you dodge out of the way. You duck. I and goes over. Like, God damn it, he says. Oh, unlucky Emerald. You suck and you should feel bad. <laughs> I heard that small I'm going to fucking kill you! So, Vol is next. Yeah, alright. Thank you for moving into a bit more of a range there. So I'll move over to hit three. I'm just going to have a look. One, two, three, four, seven, eight. Yeah, I can. Oh, actually, no, that's eight. That's eight, eight, yeah, I can only move six. Uh, oh, no, I'm not thinking move. I'm, I was thinking firing distance. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, but, no, eight won't do it because I've got 120... One, oh, yeah. 120 feet is 10 squares. 120 feet is, 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 okay. is, is 24 squares. So 120 feet is 24 oh, yeah, squares. Is it 120? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 120 feet is, yeah. Bigger yeah. than this map. Uh -huh. Oh, that's good. Okay, so <laughs> I'll just move myself over here. All right. And I'll just blast. <laughs> <laughs> What you gonna do? Throw a javelin at me? <laughs> <laughs> that would that would give you too much of a chance. Um, so make a range a spell attack against okay. the target. Yeah. So it's just your spell attack bonus against his AC. Spell with so roll. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Roll. Roll d twenty plus your spell attack bonus. <gasps> a twenty! Oh my God! The dice are liking y'all now. Yeah. Okay. Both of us trying to cast our spells got nat twenties. And it's it's only one d ten, but that doesn't the, the um, natural twenty doesn't help at all. You roll twice, it. so roll two d tens. Uh, okay. All the dice you roll twice when you roll a crit. Well, there we go. That one and oh, the color dice. Yeah. yeah. Total damage yeah. from this. Uh, we'll go with the seven. Woof! No, no, it's not advantage. You add them. Oh, add them. So add 12. them up. Twelve. Yep. Your blast against this purple sort of crackling thing. Yep. So as you do, it's like, what, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? You, maybe you use that javelin instead. And so as you sort of like this voice comes up out of you, your okay. necklace glows. You just but, point but, at them. The crack comes down. I said, you missed the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and this horrible sort of sound and crackling chaotic energy. Well, not chaotic. It's devilish. force damage as well. <laughs> yeah, just force damage. Bam! It hits him in the chest and knocks him back. His 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 early, newly opened wound, you know, it's like it sort of you know scorches all of this, and he is absolutely staggered. He coughs up this big mouthful of blood. He is bloodied, which means he's already through half of his hit points. You've hit him very very hard. So oh, he sits back there. He loses his grip on his bow and looks at you just with <laughs> just with fear, like the first time, like that cocky look in his eyes, like what have you done? Like where did you get that power from? He's looking at your chest, like. Hey, you're not one of us! As he points at your red mirror. Talk to him about a contract. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, call uh, uh, Sure, sure. He's scared. He's like, yeah, yeah, uh, may, may, maybe I may pick the wrong side. The boss over here says, what did you say? Oh, so, uh, nothing, nothing, boss. Uh, I'm just trying to fake him out. But he's like, Dude, I don't think you can talk later. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there is no later. Okay, so <laughs> that was a very effective thing. So not only did you damage him very badly, you've terrified him with this thing. So you have an opening, which doesn't always happen, where you might, I don't usually let this happen during combat. You don't, won't be able to convince him, but it could be that if, if you sort of under sort of like a quick sort of rule of parlay, if you promise to spare him, he'll take that as like he'll be pretty assured that you'll spare him. However, you'll be sparing him. This might be your best chance to finish him off. You don't know what he's capable of. It just means that he might be out of the fight if, if you if, if you uh, just, if you promise him uh, that you'll uh, he'll stop attacking you if you stop attacking him. He could do truce. However, who says who knows what the boss will do about that? Mm. Okay, that was Vol. Very good. Next are the Reds. One still getting stuck. By Kill the cloth. No, nope. cloth is too far away. This one will have to do. <laughs> so. Oh, God botherer. This would be spectacular. And so the bosses come over here. I don't know if they can make it to you. One, two, three, four, Does five. Does this control like... weapon stop uh, impede? Well, no, I don't like the look of that. I don't like the look of the knobby crucifix, I must say. There's somebody around here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. They do a nice trick here. This one moves over here and holds his action. 
letting this one move into place. That triggers this one's held action, so it is striking with it. He is striking with advantage against you. Hmm. Okay. So here we go with a red advantage with a mace against your AC. With a 13? No, it thumps your armor, but he's able to swing again, again with advantage. These guys are dangerous when they're together. With a 24 is a critical hit. Yes. He bludgeons you badly. Nine points of damage against you. All right, all right, you've handled that. Mm -hmm. Now the other one is able to attack. He also has the same trick. He's attacking with advantage. These guys in a pair, dangerous as they are. With a 14? Yep. No, hits your arms like... Oh, this, is, this one's got good armor, he says. And then second attack with a mace. With a 16? No. No! Ah, oh, such good things. Like, one off. Ah, oh, just one off. One bit of blood after a massive attempt on the attack. They look very worried. He's like, he seems to have very good armor. So it's armor's for pussies, he yells at you. Oh, these guys. All right. That was you. That was them. Uh, that's all the reds. Let's finish this off while doing as taking as little damage and maybe not using all your spells. Next is Shmaragd. Um, just for my own interest, you said you had a held action. Mm. Is that something that triggers when another sort of when enemies yeah. come into? Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, I was going to use it. Like you don't yeah, have to use it, but I was just yeah. wondering. That's is that, true. Is that no, the very time good. Yeah, when please it, remind when me. It, I, yeah, yeah. I was honestly forgetting about that. No. Yeah, you had a held action, so mm. it's up to the players with the DM. Yeah, okay. But or another player to help you out. Very yeah. good for you. No, just wondering. Like, is that yeah, the time said, when, it, when so, it would happen or mm -hmm. not? That really would. So he would go here. I would say. You're pretty confident that he's going to move, so I'll say like, if if uh, roll roll a tactical roll. If you roll very high, you'll be you'll be smart enough to, to wait. Yeah, you, you know you re, you think that you could stab him now, but he'd have a plus to his AC. You're pretty sure he's going to move into place here, and you were right. So as he steps here, you stab him, and he doesn't have a plus to his AC. Do an attack with your javelin, a handheld attack, uh, the, the same kind of attack. Bonus. So, both strength bonus so is that just is, is that this is just his held action, okay. and that's. Yeah, so it's a d20 plus your javelin bonus. Uh, which is a year five, so. Against the boss. 17. 17 hits. Do your damage against the boss. Nope. No. Oh, oh. Wrong, it it wrong dice. Um. <laughs> Are you sure javelin is a d6? Yeah, I guess it's yeah. simple. Um, d6 plus, plus your strength. Five, six, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm? Uh, five. Yeah. So six. Six, yeah. No, you rolled a one? Uh, Why do you get yeah. a plus five? No, no, no. no. Oh. It's, it's four. Four, four. Okay, four. Yeah. yeah. So you roll a one. So you get your strength bonus. Yes. Oh, so strength. Which is three. three. Yeah, three. And, and yeah. it should do the math for you. Yeah. Does it say next to on the sheet? Does it say javelin? Uh, yes. Does it say does it have a damage column plus, next to javelin? Plus five. What does it say? No, 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 no. no. That's the that's, that's the your two hits. Uh, and then next to it. Oh, one. Yeah. One d six plus three. Okay. There we go. So we, yeah, we got there in the end. So that's so you rolled the d six. That was the one. We do a three. Four damage to the boss. Oh, it's something. Yeah, exactly. That's a held action. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Then they complete their action and do all the things that they did, or not yeah. do all the things they did. And that was very good. Thank you for reminding. Oh. That was the Red's turn, and Shamara, now it's Sorry. your turn. Sorry, because you just also pointed out that you didn't plan on using it, then you'll play the hold, but I just thought, wanted, I was just for yeah. my curiosity going, is that when it sort of yeah. is meant to... Yeah, no, use it when you can. Yeah, always, okay. as, as long as you've got good conditions, you, you don't have to use it on the first trigger, you can hold back. Uh, so I could have asked you, you could do it now, but you think he's going to move, but I already told you he was going to move. That's why I used the die to figure out what you... you I'm in a good position now, though, so. You're in a good position? <laughs> good position to die, he and says. Change weapons as well. What would you like yeah. to do? Now, spiritual weapon, now you were talking about that, you can move it, but the disadvantage, they can only move 20 feet, it moves slowly, so it kind of looms up on people. That's but, four squares, isn't it? Yeah, only four squares. Yeah. And also, he said, "I don't like the look of that crucifix." So he might have been trying to get away from it. So it's but I've got, very smart I've got move. a, I've got a dude right here. You sure do. I mean, I'm not going to stop you. I've yeah, then roll. Wait, 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 what, what? Um, <laughs> so things are toward us. So yeah, Schmog, Schmog. I'm sorry, we didn't listen, you know, yeah. Yes, 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 spare me, spare me. So yeah. So yes. could I? I don't know. This is the thing. Could I have it sort of? We come to this. him and loom over him and try and intimidate him with the threat of it without actually using. I it. think it has to be binary. So, like, basically, I, I don't like mixing sort of diplomacy yep. and combat. That's what the mm -hmm. parlay is for. But just because of this thing is so terrifying, and because of some of the lines that got said, I just did a rare thing that says like he's willing to basically surrender if you promise. Like, he, he, but he has to have to have a binding promise that nobody is going to attack him. And he won't attack you for the rest of the fight. That's the best, the binding thing. It doesn't mean that he's not going to try to betray you later on. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have a larger agenda. He's just scared as shit. And he is, he's saying he will stop attacking you if you all promise to stop attacking him. It's but it has to be... Uh, you want to We've got no problem if you want. 
if you want it. Well, my my yeah, only my thought is like I'm too, I'm too, ni- both of both of both of these can only move like to yeah exactly here. your spiritual weapon is useless otherwise um because I won't have the line of sight if I move my one two three four five like there's nowhere I can move. That puts me back inside of these guys. Well, you, you can move here. You can go one, two, three, four, five. You, you can move there. And oh. you'll see them. Okay. And then the spiritual weapon can go towards Emerald, and then, then you're you're doing both. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that was Emerald. Um, yeah, move one's Emerald. It's all right. Somehow I thought that the other way around. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. I could actually move up and. Do, 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 do. Um, how many spell slots do I still have left? Um, I might, I might, I might. We're not going to be able to rush just too much. Sacred <laughs> Flame. <laughs> okay. This one. All right. Um, so one, two, three, four, four. Okay. <laughs> okay. Four, just, four. Just keep myself still with a wall. So <laughs> if they, someone moves, it, actually, yeah. if I move, th- no, that doesn't change no, my no, advantage no. or disadvantage. Um, Depends on where they come from. Yeah, Liz, I'll, I'll stay there so for yeah. the sake okay. of it. Let's keep it moving. Um, mm-hmm. All right, so yeah, it's just going to be Sacred Flame. Yeah, this I guess which one? one? Yeah. Um, number two. Okay, number two. Okay, so Sacred Flame. All is... right. He rolls a saving throw with his dexterity. Oh, he <laughs> did damage against him. This time, the flame catches him unawares, and he can't dodge out of the way in time. Roll your sacred flame damage. I can look it up for you, but hope you know it. Very good, good, good speed. Very um, good. He takes five damage as radiant flames crackle around him, and uh, looks like he's he's just like he his skin starts to kind of crack and peel. So you think that he's basically at maybe half his hit points, close to half his okay. hit points. Doing all right. Some fake tans wearing off. <laughs> fake tans peeling. Now you have your bonus action with your spiritual weapon. You know you can hit Emerald or uh, or move yeah. it closer to those two, and it's your decision if you want I to. I am going to. I'm time. going to go ahead and and try and hit. Hell yeah! Emerald. It's like no, no, Shabon, um, no, Shabon. Is corner enough to be close enough? To yes, hit? that's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes, there is. Um, so what? How does it work now that it's, it's like uh, the still second? a spell attack bonus? So just roll with your spell attack bonus. And it <laughs> ta- still takes a spell slot. Well, no, okay. that. that's a great thing. <laughs> so <laughs> spell attack <laughs> bonus is just going to be again Not the one d eight plus three. No, you gotta hit. You gotta hit it first. So the, the weapon is still oh. swinging at him. So use a d twenty. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so plus five. Very good. Oh, 17. yeah. 17. He tries to dodge out of the way, but he is not fast enough. That big thorny crucifix hits him. Now do your damage. Okay, now for damage. Seven. He dies. <laughs> he uh, is like holding himself. like, Shmurag, no, 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 no. The, this thing just comes at him. It, like, chops off his hand as it goes through and just goes right into his eyeballs. Like, oh. Oh, he falls over back with a smoking radiant hole in his head. I feel this needs a one liner. <laughs> <laughs> Catch me. But a power of Christ. <laughs> no. no. You shouldn't have betrayed us, bro. Oh, that's right, exactly. That is Should just said. That'd awesome. Be a rolls down. Now, Shmarag. Uh, yeah, not more than enough done. Shudian. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take him off the board yeah. entirely. That's great. Good job. Oh, because you said this one looked like he was damaged. Oh, can, he's, he's, can we turn him upside down? Close. No, uh, not quite. Not okay. quite, yeah. He's, he's getting very close. He's yes. right on the board. Um, can I second wind? Sure, of course. Um, yep. Um, and um, can I also use one of my battle master maneuvers, which yeah. is the sweeping attack? Oh, perfect like to, time for I, it. I would like to try that out. Nice, um, okay. Yeah, so... Um, Good. Getting uh, faster. Ah, yeah. oh, uh, bad luck. Yeah, not good. Yeah, that's better. Um, so yeah, well, that's helped. So um, remember, you're adding your fighter level. So you give give yourself four, I hope. Yep. Give yourself um, four hit points. Yes. Yeah, on top of that. Okay. Good. I got. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, one of those. Um, yes. Right, so right. using your battle master technique. Yes. Uh, I could look it up, but uh, do you do you know how, how this works? So uh, just rolling. That I'm using up one of the D8s um, for the, for the maneuvers. Um, yep, Battlemaster 5e. So I know you're definitely going to use the die. Let me just sort of look up uh, quickly here, unless you've got actual literal stuff to read to me. I'll do it here. Not. Where is the Battlemaster? Mm-hmm. Come on, D8. Um, yeah, it'll be there. Um, yeah. I can attack one, but I can get a chance to attack the other one at the same time. I got it dialing up here. Yeah, that's the great thing about it. Sweeping attack, sir. Yeah, so sweeping attack. 
When you hit with a melee weapon attack, then you can expend the superiority die to attempt to damage another creature with the same attack. Okay. So step one is pick which one you're going to hit. Uh, the closest one with the great axe. Yeah, sure. So yeah. with an axe, roll your d20 just like a regular axe attack. 18 plus, 18 plus, plus something. My, plus my five. Fantastic. Yeah. You hit him easily. Yeah. Your axe cleaves through. He can't even start to dodge out of the way. Roll your damage against him. That's step one. Not that one. Yep. Uh, that's not damage. It's a no. d12. Oh, 12. Uh, green. Green. Green, 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 green. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it was, okay. It's, yeah, it's four. Four. Oh, okay, so four. he loses four. He is definitely, you can flip him over because he's definitely getting wounded now. He's below yeah. half. And now can I, will the sweeping attack? Ah, oh, yes, sorry. There's, there's, one, there's, 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 one, there's one other thing. Okay, but that's fine. Um, so, the sweeping attack. There's, there's a weird ticking sound you're hearing behind you, but as that happens, you do the sweeping attack. When you hit, what you've done, you expend one superiority die, what yes. you do, yes. to damage another creature. Choose another creature within five feet and within your reach. There you yes. go. Yeah. If your second attack, if your original attack roll would hit the second creature, which it would, because it's got the same armor, so you're good there, it takes damage equal to the number you roll. So you're going to damage the boss with a D8. D8. This is an awesome, like awesome it. skill. That's the red right one there. Yeah. Uh, red. Red, red, red. red. There you go. Yeah. Oi, oi, oi! Ah, you're you know, just warming it up. You're warming up. Oh, you're yes. new to this skill. New, new like, to, yeah. Go down and remember. Okay, first stance like this, and then <laughs> <just> this. <laughs> okay, so good job. Go through. You cut through with one, but yeah, just knowing your technique, you pull out and just sort of drift over and slice the boss across. You're not a lot of damage, but definitely it's like. Oh, that's quite a move. This guy, by the way, he's wearing, you realize, I uh, didn't mention, he's wearing like a, like a, almost like a sparkly dinner coat. It's sort of like a vest, uh -huh. but it's sort of, sort of glam, you know, it's like, it's sort of sparkly red in a way. It's sort of, sort of like cruise armor. ship host uh, kind yeah, exactly, of cruise ship host stuff. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it just sort of, you know, cuts out, it's like, my glam! It's <laughs> you cut it over, it's like, I can't repair that. Uh, but as he looks over, he's like, oh, but this will cheer me up. And he hears a tick, 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 tick. Emerald's body has been lying there, right, since uh, since uh, you dug the smoking hole. Oh, shit. You 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 see just you see uh, just the falling of a spurt of blood has come out of his chest. He's been long. He's been dead for a second, but the spurt of blood has still sort of arcing on the floor like bits of bone. You see a glowing red piece of metal, blood red. It's the chaos shard. It apparently has come out of his chest with a burst, sort of mangling his chest, and it's going tick 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 tick, and it's coming to like. And this boss turns towards it. It says, uh, 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 this boss says, come to me, baby. And this one over here, the, this guy who's almost dead, says, me first, and pushes the boss away. And like, he holds, he faces towards the thing. It skips on the ground and goes, cool, into his chest, right where the scar is. Bam, it sets him back. Like, yes! And he powers up. He gets more hit points and he's no longer bloody. So, so, so it's it, like his so own version of Second Wind. It's like a, so it like a massive Second Wind. You're yeah, because they were the Emerald was here, oh, so it would have rolled and skittered. Yeah, it goes tick tick tick. Oh, it sort of like that. bounced from the side and like was seeking him out. You know, so yeah. it, and this boss wanted it, but this guy got it instead. All right, and so with that, it's like he turns as well. It's like. I think we're gonna want that sparkly vest when this is done. His like voice is lower, and he's got like a couple inches taller. Uh, and, and he's like, "Oh, wood elf shit! Oh, I know everything that little pipsqueak knew. Oh, Nyladell! I know where Nyladell is. I know where mom and dad are." He seems mom to have gotten the memories. Yes, um, the leaders of the elves. Mother and father. Yeah, I thought he gave Mother and father. <laughs> He seems to have inherited Mother the Dead. memories of Emerald as this shard goes into him. Memory and experience of Emerald Wait. and hit point. All of his wounds have closed up and he's gotten bigger and bulkier. So, so the evil the stepchild? <laughs> well, we're at the bottom of the initiative. We had a really nice final yeah. glancing blow. We revealed the thing about what implanted shards are good for, and it's 920. So I think that's a perfect mm -hmm. place to stop, and we'll carry this over mm -hmm. the next time. So we'll start off with combat, which you often do. And so instead of a quick combat or another act one thing, we'll do this, and that's perfectly fine. Keep your chips on the board while I take a picture. And, I finally uh, pictured the way the, the Chaos Shard would be Do you know the scene in Jumanji, the original, where yeah. the final dice, yes. dice roll, yeah. it just, it's bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and it's just going, and, you know, and they're all holding their breath until it stops. That's the sort of yeah, crazy like that. bouncing <laughs> that cool. that Chaos Shard that would have been doing. Yeah. I love that. Jumanji. 
You can take your uh, player tips now and yeah. put them in the well way usually. I'm so taking donations do, as oh well. So before I do the donation stuff. So so what have you learned? You've learned more about the reds. Why? How they implant shards. You learned why they implant shards. You saw in combat how effective these shards do, passing along hit points and knowledge. And you know this this ritual, this infernal ritual they're chanting to as they're getting implanted. You know that Emerald has been groomed this entire time, and he got convinced by these guys to join them. You decided not to convince him. You decided to attack them, and as a result, Emerald's still dead, but in a way, he lives on. And, so I don't uh, know why they're afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, XP we will give at the end of combat, so you are gaining XP. This is a, a good combat for that, but uh, that comes a little bit later. Uh, loot, all that other stuff will come next time. I would normally ask what you want to do next. Certainly you are going to finish this next, and I have an idea of even what happens next. So there is not a choice for you to make. Uh, it will be quite clear what to do once you get through that door. I'm just trying to think of more, more, more liners. <laughs> no, no. Like, um, good with the one liners. Like, oh God. And that's it. Good like job, the everybody. The of, of mm. being juiced is natty, and I'm just trying to think of a way of uh, working that in. <laughs> like, <laughs> you natty, bro? <laughs> I'm surprised that there wasn't a, you know, stop hammer time. <laughs> just going with the ultimate pro movie of uh, Point Break. And just <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, dude. Okay, good. Uh I hope you enjoyed watching us teach Dungeons & Dragons to absolute beginners. Want to know more about how we do it? Then support our nonprofit mission. Unlock extensive how-to videos and use the Courage & Chaos method yourself by using free materials that we provide. You can get all that at the link that you see here. That is tinyearl.com slash teachdd, or you can click that link in the description. Of course, please like, share, and subscribe. We're going to come out with these videos every two weeks in this series, so I will see you again soon.